call the meeting to order at 6.07. Uh, first, we have um, minutes to approve from June 17, 2017. Everybody get a chance to look them over. Yeah. Yep. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Okay. All right. Okay. No corrections. All righty. Financial statements. So I mailed you your financial statements, and there were two of them. Um, the final FY17 and um, the FY18 for uh, July and August. Um, as you can, if you look on the last page of the FY17, it says budget balance zero, so we spent all our money, which is which is good. Um, and the FY18 will, I don't know if it'll be in October it's for the October report because it's October 5th is here before we know it. Um, we, I need to add in the encumbrances for the salaries. Uh, we don't do it in uh, July and August because the teachers don't start getting paid till September. So we'll see a more realistic financial statement uh, once the payroll is encumbered. Uh, you have eight warrants <coughs> to sign tonight, totaling $52,613.76. And that's all I have, unless anyone has any questions. Oh, that's quick. <laughs> No questions? No questions. Okay. We're good. Uh, public comment? We have public. <laughs> not sure. I've never been one of these little shindigs before, so I'm not quite sure how it works. I know on the agenda you guys are talking about the lunch program. Um, I had a couple things I want to say about it. I wasn't sure if I should wait until then, if I can be heard then, or if I can talk yeah. now. No. No, sign? Okay. Uh, so for those of you who don't know, my name is James Joannette. My mom is actually the cafeteria manager at the grammar school. Um, got a whole lot of information I just want to throw at you, so put it down on paper, so bear with me. Again, my name's James. If you want to interrupt or ask me any questions, that's completely fine. Um, I want to talk to you guys this evening about how the, I feel the poor performance of other school lunch programs in this district has led to the Conway Lunch Program, um, and specifically the people working in it, to be unfairly punished. Uh, last spring, the district hired a consultant to come in and evaluate the five school lunch programs. I'm assuming you guys have all seen the report by now. Uh, what I'd like to do is just give you a little more background so you have a better idea of what was actually done here in the building. Um, the consultant who came in to the grammar school he was in the Conway kitchen for about 30 minutes. Um, he spoke to Jean, my mom, for about the program. He didn't walk in the fridge or the freezer or check in the inventory or anything like that. Um, it was just a simple walk and talk and going over the program. He expressed to Jean how impressed he was with the lunch service that day. And keep this in mind when you look at the report that 30 minutes, one day in the Conway grammar school. Um, I'm a little concerned with some of the public comments that have been made recently um, at previous school committee meetings uh, around the district. People seem to be talking generalities about the lunch programs, and unfortunately, I think that can make a lot of other people look guilty by association. Um, one example, Dr. Harry, I don't mean to point you out, but you talked to the Deerfield School Committee, um, and you said that the consultant's time in the district, he found that there's too much food being wasted, and it, some schools even found expired food. I think by making comments like that without actually saying where this is happening, um, it kind of lumps everybody in. It could look, make Conway look guilty by association. Um, by not sp stating what specific schools they have in it, it sounds like everyone or even all the schools sorry, could be guilty. Uh, I can assure you there are no expired food items in the Conway kitchen, freezer, refrigerator. Um, I find it concerning that he found expired foods in other schools but didn't actually look at the Conway school. Um, I'm not sure if that's just a lack of Conway receiving their shared services or if the consultant was simply impressed with what he saw during his day in Conway that it just wasn't necessary to investigate. The Conway Lunch Program doesn't have a lot of wasted food. Jean is a pretty smart woman. She's been doing this for a while. She knows her kids. She knows her school. She knows how to order her food. Um, she took over this lunch program in 2000. It's a program that was in complete disarray at the time. I'm, I know a lot of people weren't around back then, but um, the participation rate back then for the lunch program was around 40%, which I'm assuming since you guys know the lunch program is not very good. Um, within a year, she was able to completely turn the program around by making good food that the kids wanted to eat. Uh, ever since then, she's been running what I would describe as a pretty fantastic lunch program. Um, she's the longest tenured program manager in the district. She's run a stable program in Conway, while changes have happened throughout the district. Her stability for an extended time has given the school committee and the administration the ability to not worry about the Conway program. 
Gene Spear headed the installation of a salad bar at the Conway Grammar School. It was the first grade school in our district to have a salad bar. If any of you have seen it, it's a pretty impressive setup, and she was the first one to do that. However, the other schools have clearly had their issues. I'd like to give some examples of how hard she has been working. A great example was the day the consultant actually came in. Uh, it was French Toast Day. French Toast Day uh, in the Conway Grammar School is large slices of Texas toast that are hand-battered and cooked on griddle. They're not frozen sticks that are thrown in an oven and warmed up like you might see at other schools. There's also a side of homemade um, home fries, something you don't really see that often. Um, other schools, there was actually one school in our district in particular that in the not too distant past actually served for lunch a USDA certified reimbursable meal, which is called pancake in a bag. I don't know if any of you guys have heard about that, but that was a lunch that used to be served in one of our schools. Here, we serve French toast homemade. There's a lot of talk of making um, more food from scratch within the district. I think that's a big thing that's been going on. I know the administration's been talking a lot about it. It's a very important issue. Um, I think it's kind of strange with the changes that are going on that nobody actually considered looking at what's going on in the Conway kitchen. Um, every Wednesday, the Conway lunch program makes fresh baked rolls from scratch every single week. Um, it's been mentioned at other school committee meetings that uh, there, are or there are people working in these lunch programs and they're taking unauthorized paid breaks. I can assure you the women in the Conway lunch program are not taking long breaks. Other examples of hard work that's happening here, mashed potatoes. In many other schools, powdered mashed potatoes get thrown in a bucket, mix it up with milk and water, boom, instant mashed potatoes. In the Conway program, 50 pound bags of mashed potatoes are peeled by hand. That's homemade. That's from scratch. Turkey dinners, which is actually served today at the grammar school. You might have heard about it if you have kids in the school. Um, she roasts a turkey to make turkey dinner. This is a common grammar where you're roasting homemade turkey. I think it's a pretty impressive way of going about it. Now, I'm so bothered uh, by a decision that's made to cut the working hours by a mom and this program where she's been for 17 years. There's a dedicated employee, and all this happened without actually looking at what was going on in the kitchen, which to me seems, I don't know, seems kind of crazy. Um, if you want to go ahead and hire a food service director, which I know we're going to be talking about later on, um, that seems fine. But for Conway, there should be assurances that the lunch program here is going to be able to run at least somewhat on their own. And if you guys are happy with it, I'm not sure, but allowed to progress the way it's been doing. Um, and I'd like to get to the part that bothers me absolute most about this entire process. Um, I'm just going to walk through a quick timeline. July 1st of this summer, Jean received her rehire letter. She gets every year. Um, <coughs> On August 17th, however, uh, Mrs. Gordon left her a voicemail um, asking her to come to a meeting on Monday, August 21st, the week before school was to begin. My mom was actually out of town. Mrs. Gordon explained to her, I know you're on your personal time, but if you could come in. If not, it's no big deal. I found out later you had no idea what was happening, so I can't put any blame on you, Mrs. Gordon. Um, but she actually came back to town for the day. She went into the meeting. She didn't really know what was going on. She thought it had to do with the new Meals Plus program, thought there'd be some training or something like that. Instead, she showed up and she met um, the Mrs. Page, I believe, right? Uh, this is the new interim manager, someone she had never met before. During this meeting, she was informed that her hours were being cut. She was completely blindsided. After 17 years of dedicated service to this district, the town, and this grammar school, she's informed by a complete stranger that her paycheck is going to be cut. I'm sorry, but that's pretty embarrassing. I can't believe that's how business is done in this district, a school I went from kindergarten to 12th grade. That's, I, I think it's shameful. Maybe I'm wrong in that. I don't know. To make it even worse, had she still been on vacation and not made that meeting, she would have found out by a letter that came, and she would have received three days before the start of school to tell her that her hours were being cut. She cut 7% of her hours. That's a pretty big chunk of her time and her money. She had no chance to find another job, no chance to make up that money 72 hours before going back to work. I think that's kind of crazy. I'm hoping the school committee, I, I don't know where you guys stand on the lunch program, I'm not really sure, but I'm hoping moving forward there could be some way to alleviate so the people working in the lunch program aren't going to be losing money that they thought come July 1st or as of July 1st they were told they were going to be making. So thank you for your time. Is there any other public comment? I just have a question I'd like to ask. Sure. Um, the food service director that was employed by the district for some of the towns was paid, I'm assuming, from the general budget, or was it from the cafeteria budgets? 
it was paid for the cafeteria budgets. And if a new person is hired and the structure goes forward, will that money also come out of the cafeteria budgets? No, that's what that is probably the reason for asking one director and to be charged to the fiscal agent. So uh, as far as financial reporting, mm -hmm. the cost of the food service director will appear on the food service costs, mm -hmm. but the actual cash burden will come off of the school lunch fund. So it will be part of the It'll be part cafeteria. It, 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 will, it, it will not come out of the school lunch fund. It will come from the general fund. Oh, it will. Okay. <coughs> All right, so it'll Just be... Just as my salary and Dr. Perry's okay. salary and, and Mrs. Gordon's salaries come out of the general fund. Okay. But for when I report to DESE of how much our programmatic costs are, that mm -hmm. cost gets added on. Okay. It just doesn't come out of the specific budget. It's just a budget. different cash flow. <coughs> okay. Thank you. That was my question. Yeah. I've got some questions I have, but I don't... Maybe there's other things to do first before we get circle back to this, or well, it's, yeah, we're, we're not at that business yeah. item yet. So, any other public comment? Okay, uh, unfinished business discussion items policy EEA student transportation. So, <clears throat> in June, I brought up our policy for student transportation that states. Students will um, get off the bus. Uh, they will not be allowed to get off the bus unless a guardian, caregiver, or designated uh, caregiver, or guardian, or parent is, is there to make eye contact for students K to 3. We'd like to add a, a writer on the statement uh, to, in, you know, to make the statement longer, saying students in grade 4 or higher with the parent or guardian approval. So in other words, if the parent tells the school it's okay for Mary to take Johnny off the bus and bring him into the house, then the, and Mary's in fourth, fifth, or sixth grade, then the bus driver ha knows that that is okay, that they don't have to leave that child or wait till an adult shows if the adult gives permission for an older sibling. So we were just asking if we could <coughs> vote and uh, give us the permission to add that. In practice, we found that there were some times when the parents have said, listen, just let's, you know, my sixth grade kid take, the, you know, take my little one off and bring him into the house. I'm busy with the baby. And uh, we wanted to have the policy match our practice. So. More discussion, or are you guys ready to vote? We did discuss this back in the spring. Okay. So, can I have a motion? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. We did discuss this in the spring. And then we're on to new business. Do you want to go in this order or do you want to? Yeah, okay. Fine. Okay. Summer building, building maintenance update. Well, we had a new air conditioner installed in the library. Um, we had talked about two, one here and one there. Um, there was a bit of a mix-up, and um, there ended up one was installed, but actually uh, Kate Arsenault, our new tech media person, is here, and one seems to be doing just fine. If it wasn't, I was just going to let Patty know, and, but one seems to be doing just fine. Um, we budgeted for two. Yeah, I, you know, I, I think there's just a little mix-up. I came back from vacation, it wasn't installed, but we only had one. When I called Patty, she said, let me know if you need another. Um, so I'm gonna, I'll let Mr. Lesko, I will get, I'm going to email Mr. Lesko right now and find out why the decision was changed. He won't answer me right away, but we'll get the answer out to you. What was the difference between one and two price-wise? Like, I like, really don't like, know. because It was I, like 10 or 15,000, if I recall. I don't think oh, it's no, that high. No, no, no. 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 I, think was, two. I think it was $2,500. Yeah. I think it was, like, I think it was under $3,000. It was about $5,000 oh, yeah. aside yeah. for two. Yeah. Yeah. And so we at least spent twenty five. The security system was 15000 <coughs> or the income system. Have we had hot days? Could any of the speak teachers speak to? I mean, is it okay? Kate back? was here mo most yeah. of the summer. I, I was here most of the summer, and it has been fine with the air conditioner. Um, it's also been, I have to say, it's been fine with... Um, computer classes with all of the computers on and you know a class in there we've been okay and also in there, so okay. 
The one thing I noticed did not get fixed was the basketball hoop is still right. three inches out of whack or whatever. It, and yeah. it just, we, is that ever going to get addressed? We have a long laundry list of projects that we have to do from the um, from the warrant articles, <coughs> and I don't see that the basketball hoop was on there. I don't know when it got added. No. It was like a, it's a minor thing. Yeah. It's like when the electrician is here, have him take a look at it, kind of a thing. But it's so still I did let Lesko know. He was. I did let Bob Lesko know, and he was. Um, he did say he would set that up. We did get the the mulch. We did get a delivery last Friday at the bar mulch. Yeah, okay. you're gonna have to ask him for a little more, but we could do that. Can you got a tractor to spread it? Well, I think I could just. I can do it with like wheelbarrows. <laughs> I don't think yeah, it's that much. I we was going to bring a tractor down, but I was thinking, oh, yeah. put like four piles and let the kids disperse yeah. it at a recess. Would be mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I right? thought it was going to be, it's fun oh, cool. more too. We have a yeah. mom that's been coming every day with her little son, and she's been and pregnant. But well, we're going to need more, don't you think, Ash? I think so. I, yeah, the pile seems pretty small, but yeah. And then the other thing, we did like a color-coded thing about what was supposed to be done over the summer. And I don't know, but I, the one thing that I re vaguely recall is there was something about leaks in near Europe, would it just a uh, little something about the roof right there that a little the things that were on the list, know, on the does, list. That make, does that sound familiar oh uh, yeah that's the sheet Phil's talking about yeah mm -hmm. <coughs> but that that's what I thought was supposed to get done over the summer in, in, as opposed to when people are working here I guess um I will report this. Next meeting, we'll have some progress on these. Okay. We're pretty well set on them. We have the bids. We just need to refresh the bids because they were done a few months ago. But we will be working on these um, the door and, and, and pre K and the clock. So All right. Get, yeah, we'll get on them. Okay. The uh, condition of the building is excellent. As always, the building is just beautiful, and the teachers have done an amazing job of uh, cleaning a lot of the furniture and unnecessary stuff out of their rooms, leaving more room for the children in the classroom, it's what I like to call student real estate. Mm -hmm. And I walk in these rooms, and I just feel so wide open and ready to learn because it, it's about the learning and the people, not about the stuff. I don't feel dragged down with the stuff. I actually feel, and I know that if you look at a child, you know, if you got your hands and knees and look at a child and what they see, it, uh, it it's, must be so mind-opening for them to have so much space to, to move and learn and grow. Uh, and of course, the building is always... Oh, yeah, Jeannie, so Bruce, and Jerry yeah. clean in the summer. Yeah. It's excellent. Yeah, it's my former maintenance manager came for a visit, and he just couldn't believe how clean the school was. Amazing. Is there any more summer building maintenance update issues, or is that it? No more updates. Okay. Uh, summer programs? Yeah, so I invited um, Paulette Lovchek and Jennifer Wheeler to come and just give you a brief uh, summary of their phenomenal reading program this summer. So just a little bit of history. Um, when I was here my first year, there's a district um, reading math writing camp. And unfortunately, we only had three children sign up because, because it's a distance for parents. So this year, Paula and Jennifer came to me with a proposal um, to have a summer program right here at Conway. I went to Dr. Carey, talked to Louise Law, Patty, and um, we, we supported them and they they just put on such a dynamic program and um, we had 28 kids sign up for it. I know Paulette you're going to go over that but versus two so we hit a lot more kids more kids came back to us without regressing that summer regression and it was just a fabulous program so I'm going to so if these two are phenomenal as many of you know so Paulette Jen I'm going to turn it over to you. Okay. Well, we, we started out um, contacting teachers who students they thought might benefit from this. Um, we also had some ideas. We're a small school. 
Um, when we got those lists from the teachers, we sent out letters to parents. And as you said, we got 29 responses. 28 children showed up at various times. It went for three weeks, Monday through Thursday, from 8.30 to noon. The students were here. Um, and um, teachers looked at their observations of students and some of the district measures that we do throughout the year to determine if kids might need a little extra boost in the summer. We did have one or two siblings come who were not originally invited, but we said, sure, you know, because that would be easy for parent arrangements and pickup to come as well. Um, on average, we had 20 students a day. And some of these students then left <coughs> half hour early and a bus from the River Valley Day Camp picked them up. So they were able to partake in that as well. Um, we had you keep a going. really very, very filled, interesting schedule. And we just want to thank you for the support of letting us try this this summer. Um, we had students who were, in June, they were in grades K, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, attend. We started out with a whole group meeting and activity. Then we broke up into small groups by need you know what kids needed there were four rotation groups for students grades one two three four five one group was with you for a math lesson for 20 minutes then they rotated through to a word study Wilson lesson with a trained instructional assistant then they rotated through to me for a guided reading lesson. Then they had another rotation of an independent time on the computer where they were doing a math program or the Lexia reading program at their level, which is an adaptive program, um, which was an independent area for them. So we didn't need a teacher overseeing, although I was in here with the reading groups. And if there was any troubleshooting that needed to be done, someone was here to do that for them. Um, they got very used to their group and where they were rotating. We felt that the kindergarten students, that would be difficult to handle mm -hmm. for almost an hour and a half. That was most of the day spent in small groups. So we did, through your wonderful support, we hired a tutor, and that was a teacher, who um, the kindergarten students had their own rotations during that time with math, they used some iPad programs, they had some reading, they had word study at their level, and they had a little break in between. Then after that we all came together, we had a quick snack and recess, and then we came back in and everybody joined together in a big group. And that's where we had our theme, we had a science theme, didn't we? Yes. We hatched chicken eggs, we studied <laughs> eggs, feathers, birds, and we had a lot of activities around that. And I'll tell you, I kind of wondered how it would work having kindergarten students with fifth grade students. How was that going to work? It worked beautifully. Mm -hmm. um, it was really just, it was really wonderful. We did experiments, we had art projects centered around this theme. We got to candle the eggs and watch the development of the chicks. We got to observe the chicks afterward and hold them. And then they went back to the farmer. That was, that was good. Um, Yes. So Mrs. Levchuk is, is, well, she doesn't like to brag, but the farmer had only had about 30% of the eggs hatching and surviving. And under Paulette's excellent care, she had over 50% hatch and thrive. One was born, and his little feet weren't quite doing what they were supposed to. So Paulette used this pencil method she'd learned to try to help straighten his, toe, his feet and his little, mm. his little talons out. And when that didn't work, she made braces for him. <laughs> it, it's a true story. And <laughs> he did really well. When the farmer came to pick up the chicks and take them back, he couldn't tell which, which chick had had Paulette's ex excellent <laughs> physical <laughs> therapy. <on> feet. <laughs> so we were very lucky to have somebody who had so much experience hatching eggs before and, and has a love for taking care of all living things. We it, were really fortunate. It, it was pretty amazing, and the kids were very engrossed. I don't mm -hmm. think you can get any higher than that kind of engagement mm -hmm. by having something suddenly be looking like an egg. Even though they're candling and they could see the heartbeat and they could see it develop, out it comes. Mm -hmm. And then you get to hold this little thing and take care of it. It was just, it's, it's really quite quite amazing. Where did you learn avian orthopedics? Well, actually, well, because I had done this as a classroom teacher, but then I said, this isn't working. So I went 
I went online, of course. <laughs> and, and some woman said, here's how you do it. And I ran back to school, and Laura was in the office. She said, I'll help you. And this little thing was squeaking, because it's kind of painful to spread them out straight on those. You, you know, you take little cardboard paddles, and you tape them on. And yeah, so we got them on. <laughs> I know, it was, it was, it was quite a feat. <laughs> but no he did it. Right. <laughs> yes. There you go. That's right. Um, during the same time, we also had a tutor for the students who had on their IEPs tutoring services in the summer. And that occurred when the students were, would, would have been doing their independent computer time. So they weren't losing the word study math or reading time. They may have lost a few minutes of that, but they got that intense so those students actually got reading and math and writing and work <coughs> study all, two doses of it, so to speak. So I think that was quite wonderful. And they got that tutoring in even smaller groups. The groups that we had rotating were between five and six. Their small tutoring groups went down to two then. So they really had quite an intensive time, but it, I don't think it felt intensive to the students. I think they felt that this was fun, and we made the learning fun and interesting for them. And we had some wonderful, we had some STEM activities, didn't we, where they were trying to build dome shapes and find out could they do it, why is an egg so strong. We did experiments with eggs, putting bricks on them till we see what could break. We did egg mosaics. Do you want to hold up and, and sure. read some of the, the kids drew some pictures of some of the activities they really enjoyed doing. So we have making the egg mosaics. We did art. Had a visit. Oh, one of our students uh, raises pigeons, so he brought in some of his pigeons and talked about raising them and some of the things he does for them. And we were able to see two of his pigeons. One was really little more than a, a, Just hatch, a baby, yeah. Right, and the other was a tad older. Um, helped and petted the chicks. Learned that birds have that all birds have feathers. Added numbers using dice. added numbers using dice made dome and square structures, candled eggs, researched birds, played the survival game, hatched baby chicks, observed the baby chicks, they built bird nests, and one time they painted with feathers. So the art piece was really rich. Um, that was used towards the end of our day together. Uh, the STEM activities were really challenging, mm -hmm. and there was that challenging component, and if it didn't work out, try again. Always coming back to the mantra with STEM, that if it didn't work the first time, try something else. Uh, mm -hmm. It was really a full day, and it was really exciting. Mm -hmm. The kids loved it, um, and we'd love to do it again. Yeah. They, we, we ended the, then it all with what we call the egg and bird Olympics. Mm -hmm. So there were just various activities. They were getting up and moving and doing things that involved eggs and birds. One of the things we went into the art music room was we spread out, you know, little lure, little worms, and they had to use uh, little um, clothespins to pick up as many as they could within a certain amount of time to feed their baby chicks back in the nest. And, and we, we built nests, and all they could use out of nesting material were you know, close spins, that was very challenging for them. And they often worked together in pairs and they, they could choose their pairs and sometimes it was younger and older, sometimes it was, it was fascinating to see the connections happening across grade levels and the learning from each other. We went out and we observed evidence of birds and we recorded that. Um, and I have to tell you what they're learning. I just read a book with a third grade group, and it, ta it was called Road Runners, and they talked about the baby birds, how they needed care from the parents. They're not ready to fly and go off on their own right away. And one of the students said, it's like in the summer, we learned that that's, uh, I said, altricial. She said, altricial, yes. They're not precocial young. They remembered that <laughs> wow. vocabulary from the summer. That was so exciting. So thank you for your support and allowing us to try that. And, um, we did bring in the families. I just want to say one last thing. We did have a culminating family event where the children yes. gathered all of the That's things right. there.
their eggshell mosaics, some of their diagrams, um, and the other artifacts they created through our weeks together. And families came in, um, and staff that, that worked in the building the summer came in to see them. And it was really wonderful watching them talk with such confidence about what they'd learned, sharing interesting facts, mm -hmm. and even talking about, well, before I came to camp, I thought, but now I know. Mm -hmm. it, it was, it, well, we've been yeah. going on and on, so you can tell we loved it. <laughs> yes, we did. And we have it was a great experience. little note for one of the students, which was very nice. Thank you for teaching camp. I hope you do it next year. I also had a blast. I learned a lot about birds, eggs, and feathers, too. Thank you so much. And oh, that's sweet. That's <laughs> very so sweet, so thank you. It was. So thank you. Yeah. I mean, they spent endless hours. Paulette was known to sneak in the building at night to check on the chicks. And <laughs> <laughs> made her husband come home from, from vacation one day early because of the chicks. Yes. <laughs> yeah. and, and well, we sort of did a little cost analysis, the total amount um, that was paid for two teachers and IA and the two tutors came to 6098 when we divided, you know, 29 students in that, it's 210 per student for those wow, three weeks for that learning. So I think it wonderful. seemed to me to be well worth what we had was done. The but heat do, but was, the, was the heat an issue? Or, I mean, that's, that's been an issue with some well, of the here in the past. I this year was different. I've taught other summer reading camps where it's just been unbearable. Last summer was awful down in Waitley. We were just... You know, it was just really unbearable for both the teachers and students. This year was a rather cool summer, yeah, so it wasn't yeah. that bad. There was only one week that was. The other week, we actually had sweaters on yeah, one did. day did. without air you conditioning. Know what, so. we also, um, we made sure that uh, Paula and Jennifer had access to the library as right. well. Right, so right. So if we did need the air conditioning. Right, and there were fans and... Yeah. Yeah, one of my children had to go to the summer reading thing. And mm. I think one summer, it, was, it just wasn't, you know, it was fine, but it wasn't anything <coughs> exciting or it was more like you had to go. And I don't think Conley ever had very good attendance to that. Right, so 29 so versus 3. That's, oh, yeah, I can't. Yeah. So that's awesome. Thanks for all your hard work. Thank you. And <laughs> chick raising. Yes. <laughs> Those students were very lucky, very yes. fortunate students. Absolutely. Uh, on to personnel update. Oh, so um, I would like to, we have uh, three new staff members this year. Um, I've in, I invited, uh, but Kate was the only one that could make it. So I'd like to introduce Kate Arsenal, who is our librarian slash tech media specialist. Uh, since her, after our last day of school, I think Kate was here every single day this summer. Can you mm -hmm. imagine, can you believe the transformation of this library? Mm -hmm. It's really mm -hmm. amazing. So much open space, it's books by better. themes, books by authors. It's like a Barnes & Noble. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can come in and if you like this kind of book, it's there. It's so, I mean, she was here. I think almost every day this summer. Um, so, Kate. Oh, thank you. Well, I did have um, a lot of help with that. People pitched in and um, gave me some great ideas. And um, I, it was a lot of fun this summer, actually. Um, and I just, I love it here. I, I came from um, Peter Sam, Peter Sam Center School, um, where I was for nine years, and I was the tech media specialist there, um, and ran the library. And I. I'm just thrilled to be here. I love the students. I love the people I work with. Um, it just seems to be a really great community. So I'm, I'm really interested in uh, working, working together with teachers to do some innovative things um, in the classrooms and in here. So it's great to meet everybody. I'm very excited to be here. So would I ask a couple questions about this because. Um, and this is like absolutely nothing personal. I like yes, yes, I, I yeah. mad crazy respect and admire you. <laughs> um, uh, but like, um, I'm the person in town that has fought against nepotism for a while, and um, so just like, like one 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 of the PA, that that it, it, it's it's in general it's a bad idea just as a general yeah. concept. 
it's toxic to work. It, there's like all kinds of studies. It's it's it's, it's bad for a workplace. It's yeah. So can I can I talk it, a little bit about that? So um, for people who don't know, Jennifer and Kate are married. Um, I want you to know that we had every single. It was a rigorous uh, interview uh, process. We had every single teacher on the committee, with the exception of the pre-K teacher, Jennifer, of course, and. Um, uh, Mary Decision, who's the head teacher, when I'm not available, so we decided if I was going to be tied up in interviews because, you know, we had a short, we wanted to get this done, that Mary, so, but every single classroom, other classroom teacher was on the committee, Jeremy in kindergarten, Emily in second grade, fourth, fifth, sixth, all the classroom teachers were on the committee, so that's number one, so we really had, you know, it was a tough interview and a tough, um, Kate was, and this is no disrespect to any other candidate because they were great. Kate was by far head and above, shoulders above. So then comes our next question, which is what you asked. And as a committee, we talked a great deal about that and the pros and cons and if things will work out and they don't. Jennifer and I had a, a conversation about that. Kate and I had a conversation about that. In the end, the committee just decided she was just too good to pass. Oh. That's actually the only acceptable defense to nepotism. In, yeah. In but we've we went through um, Mr. and Mrs. Bovio, Jeannie, and Bruce. But, and Phil, and I want you to know that I agree we with that. considered that. that that's object. true, too. That we considered that. You shouldn't that. get a job because of who you know, and you should not get a job because of who you know. I agree with that. I agree with that. I'll tell you what, there was a little, Kate was at a little bit of a disadvantage, if I could be honest, because people didn't want anyone to think that. So, so, so just so you know, we went through a rigorous process with those conversations and everything and in the end she was just she was the person we had to have and I'll tell you one of my best hires you know but Phil to re just to respect what you're saying we we did consider all of those things in, in this town in particular it's a sticky issue because yeah. we have an assessor's office where the assessor's daughter works. We have a highway department where the current and former highway boss's right. son works. We have police, yeah. you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And there's always been a concern whether some of these appointments are hereditary or not. Yeah. Um, Welcome to a small town. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. But but for, for a lot of people, it's a yeah. significant issue. No, we, and, and, really and like our, our success as a unit depends in a large part on the concept of like best practices. When the select board is here saying your student population is down 5%, why don't you cut your teacher's aid by 5%? It's because best practices. So when we depart from what are known to be best, yeah. it's a slippery slope and we all have yeah. to watch out. So we were so we were very well aware of that, and um, like I said, it was a conversation that we had. That Jennifer so and I had, that Kate and I had. Did, and did, has has the hire been cleared with the school lawyer? Does it need to be? Need to I looked. I, I looked for policies and, and um, things because we, as a committee, decided, and um, there, there weren't any. That's because there's always been. With my wife here at some point for 30 years. Uh, and and I know, years, so how can you say? This is a little bit different just because their respective evaluations would affect their respective compensation mm -hmm. theoretically. But no. they wouldn't evaluate they each other. Well, that's what we need I mean, to make that's sure. That's, 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 that's what you need to make sure and there you know, has to be policies. We and also wanted to make sure that we were really clear about this because we, we didn't want to put Kate in a bad position. We didn't want to put put Jennifer in a bad position. So we sort of went through all of that. I did look for policies and, and I did look for all of that. And Jennifer didn't hire her for financial, for financial um, gain. 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 Right, right. Um, so I do appreciate what you're saying, Phil, and I want you to know that we took that very deep into conversation. Sounds good. Yeah. Is there and more then, recruitment? And more then um, Anthony, um, Tracia uh, was our substitute music teacher last year, and we brought him on full time this year. Oh, and Ashley Hannes is an instructional assistant. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome aboard. Thank you so much. Sure. Thank you. Um, uh, MASC joint conference? The joint conference this year is. I know it's November first, first, uh, second, and probably third. Yeah. And what I'd like to do tonight is to oh yes, um, 
the voting is November 1st. And I wanted to know if there was anyone from the school committee going this year. And Elaine? But I'm not sure I'll be there on the 1st. That's, that's fine. And Ashley? Yep. And Michael? Yep. Anybody get a hotel room yet? No, we talked about Airbnb. Yeah, but nobody's year? looked. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Taylor looked. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. We should look. Tents on the beach. Yeah. We can, we can talk about tents on the beach. Yeah. What is Pope of Sunderland? All righty. <laughs> yeah. They had a beach Sunderland. house. They, they had lots would of you, room. Would anyone like to, would you like to take a nomination just in case that there would be a voting delegate to the MASC conference? I'll nominate uh, Ashley and or Michael. Well, Michael, are you going to be there Wednesday on the 1st? I believe so. Ashley? Yeah, I plan to be, yeah. Uh, I can't, I am i don't know what time I'm getting there on the 1st, so. so One could, of you too, arm wrestle. You could vote a delegate and a backup. Mm -hmm. There you go. Mm -hmm. Okay, Dr. Mercedes, Mr. Yeah. Mark. Uh, you have more experience with this. Thing. Marginally. Yeah. Marginally. Yeah, I, 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 yep, for sure. Okay, can I have a motion? Yeah, motion. Can I redo that? <laughs> motion, <laughs> Ashley yes, for <laughs> delegate, Michael for backup. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good enough. Thank you. Okay. Um, review of food service report. I do need, um, we are sorry to uh, <coughs> to interrupt, but I do need a, um, I don't know why that says, oh, it's just vote A. Um, I need a vote. I, I need to ask the committee to nominate and, if they want to, to nominate someone to be on the policy mm -hmm. review committee. So the year before I came on, Bridie Barrett had gone through all the policies and they had, her committee had done great work, great work. And in the years since that's happened, um, all the revised policies, uh, the MASC has gone through again with the new legislation, and there's many more policy changes that need to be done again. And some are very minor, such as replacing the word handicap with disability, but others will be you know, they must pay a whole team of lawyers to do this to keep their salaries coming, huh? <laughs> so, <laughs> well, you pay dues for you know. Oh my so, God. In order to keep up with the latest and current laws, we do need to look at these policies. We need at 530. I'm not sure if it will be Monday nights, Wednesday night, whatever the, the team feels um, is. I don't know how long they last. I don't know how many we can, you know, do in a night, do in an evening. You're really giving a good sales pitch there, Lynn. I'm, I'm telling sorry. you. I'm sorry. So anyway, <laughs> would the committee consider nominating? Um, first of all, I, it's up to you. You're going to discuss it. Right? So you, we, we would sit down with a school committee member from each of everybody in the district and just four others, and okay. then I would present work for the night, and we would go through each one and. Yep, this sounds good. Yeah, I can see how this has to change. Let's do it. Very similar, like adding this writer onto this policy. And then we would, I would bring it to the school committees each month and ask them to update those. And then we would go through and update them in, in, our, in our policy documents. And then they would go up online. We would send them to MASC, and then they would put them up online for us. Two years ago, we did such an incredible amount of work with this. I thought it was going to be two meetings. It was like eight. Yeah. So I can't see there being a large quantity. You know, I mean, just it, it, there was a lot of outdated stuff. Um, and I thought Marty did an outstanding job, along with Bob Halla and members of the other committees. So. So you want to do it again? Is that what I Yeah, mean? yeah. I was no, about no, to yeah, say, yeah, yeah. whoever wants to have a winner, 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 win
I you're already on the building no, committee. I, I don't know. <laughs> no, no, she was another opinion. She was something else. <laughs> There's about this many. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm I'm hoping it'll go, to go quickly. It. I think it will. <laughs> Who I wants have. it? Come on, I. I nominate I everybody else here. I still here. have a little I'm PTSD. <laughs> two years ago. I'm gonna be at the MA and I have to be the delegate, so I'm out. Let's just draw. I'm not, because of child care, I'm not in a position yeah. to be a doctor. Let's, let's look at what we have going on here. It's not feasible. I'll do it. But, uh, Phil's going to take Phil, one for I the team. I appreciate that. So we might have to meet in a bar. Okay. <laughs> um, the collaborative a representative is Ashley, yeah. and the policy review is vacant. And yeah. Phil, can I have a motion? I nominate Phil as the... Representative on the policy committee. Can I have a second? I second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> Including Phil. Did you see his hand? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Phil, you'll get compensated with hugs and then some. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and then some is right. And then yeah. Some. Hugs and tequila. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Phil, and I'm. Um, it's too bad you're not going to MAS. No, I might. I'd like to. I just. I just. Yeah, it's. Um, Please come. And we had such a, we really had a good. great dinner. Yeah. And Phil really is, you just have all that history. Yeah. And I have history to share with you. Uh -huh. I, I did. I, I sent it in the email. I'm, some, uh, my, my, my aunt is related to the four years. That's and my aunt by marriage, my, my father's brother's wife, is related to the four years. So you're a Conway native or a Conway Conway blood. Related blood. roots. Conway blood. These people apparently owned a store. When they first came to town, they owned a general store, yes. and then they got the farm. It's where the historical society is now. And then they. You need to take a tour. You should come with us. I know. Oh, yeah. Oh, it needs to be. In the I have pictures of them. That's true. Really? Yes. I'm amazed. So I didn't know that, and I was taking her around, you know, my digs, my school, and my, uh, you know, my district, and she said, "Oh, you know, my uncle up in, uh, you know, and uh, they." The Mighty Land for School in the Conway Grammar School, and I was, that's one of my schools. So that's amazing. And we went and just lovely, just lovely. That's cool. So exciting, that's exciting awesome. news, folks. I'm not an outsider anymore. There you go. No, <laughs> you got roots. So do I have to fill this out and send it in, or is this going down? Yeah, if you could yep. fill it out tonight, right. that would be so I will helpful. do that. Uh, so back to food service report. Thank you. Oh, Patty, would you take? Sure. Thank you. Okay, so um, back in the um, back in June, we had a food study review done for all five schools because we had been losing money. Um, so we had a consultant come in uh, to evaluate the program. Took away ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, <laughs> so we um, uh, let me go. And then I'll talk about Conway specifically. We'll talk in general. So the reason we brought the consultant is because every school was losing money. Um, so we needed to look at why our programs were losing money. So he came in and did an assessment and uh, gave us some areas of where we needed to work. And we need to increase our participation. Uh, we needed to decrease our food costs and our labor costs. One of the industry metrics is called meals per service hour. And the average for an elementary school is that each worker produced um, 15 to 18 meals. And on average, we do 8.2. So it, it seems from a metric standpoint that we are overstaffed. Uh, we need to do better with our, our usage of our commodities, which are our free food from the government. Um, we're not taking advantage of their diversion program. Um, for an example of what a diversion program is, is we are offered ground beef. And what we do is we take that ground beef and most normally we will make meat sauce for spaghetti and meat sauce. But if we diverted some of that ground beef, they could make us meatballs and we know kids love meatballs, and they might eat the meatballs and spaghetti or even a meatball grinder more than uh, just ground beef. Uh, the other thing we can divert is chicken. Um, the quality of the chicken nuggets we receive are not always great, but we could take the chicken that we receive uh, in commodity, divert that to a company like Tyson, and they could give us whole breast nuggets back. So that's something that no school in this district has ever taken advantage of, the diversion program. So we need to um, start using our free foods in a better way. 
Um, we also need to, the way that the purchasing is going, we do go out collaboratively, all five schools, to bid. But they're, they're, the bidders are putting more and more restrictions on us. For instance, this year we cannot buy one five-pound container of cottage cheese. We can only buy five five-pound containers of cottage cheese together, and no one school needs that much. So if we started doing bulk purchasing and come up with an order, we'll be able to maybe lower our food costs even more and distribute them evenly. Um, financial oversight is a big one. Um, we all five. All five schools report financially differently, which causes problems um, because one person reports things one way. So when we're trying to make comparisons, are we comparing apples to apples or are we comparing apples to oranges? So we need to make sure our claims are being maximized. We need to get really strong on our collections. And um, we also, part of the problem with, um, with non-payment, that is, that is an issue that should be brought to the principal uh, of the building because there could be many reasons people aren't paying, and one of them could be that their financial circumstances have changed. And a lot of people think that the free and reduced application can only be filled out in September, which isn't true. It can be filled out at any point in the year. And when we see a family not paying, then we should say to the principal, hey, so-and-so is getting behind in their bill. You may want to check in with them and make sure everything's all right and maybe offer another free and reduced application. Um, so to combat some of these issues, um, we did put in the Meals Plus. We talked about doing that. So that's going to give us a good reporting model um, as to the parents as well as to us because now all five schools have it, so everything, all financial numbers are going to be reported the same. I did give you a handout tonight for Conway in, sp uh, in specifically um, for the past three years. Uh, the money that we have paid over three years in loss for the program was $21,104.74. And that's money that came out of our school budget to subsidize the lunch program. And they, I attached the copies of the invoices that you guys had approved in the warrant process uh, over the last three years. So on average, over the three-year period, $21,000, that's $7,000 a year that we're losing in our lunch program. And part of it is program loss, and part of it is bad debt. Down below, um, I don't, I'm not going to address this. I'm not speaking about anybody in particular. We're looking at financial metric data. So the most comparable school to Conway is Waitley. Conway had 144 students last year. Waitley had 134. The daily hours in the kitchen in Conway were 14.2. In Waitley, it was 11.5. That's a big difference for, for a difference of 10 children. Each school took a reduction of 1.5 hours a day. And even now, the daily hours for Conway are 12.7, and for Waitley, 10. So there's three hours a day of time being spent for a total of a difference of 10 kids. So this is what we're trying to do, is we're trying to align all of our schools and calibrate and make sure that we've got the appropriate personnel doing the appropriate things. Um, one of the things here in Conway that you'll notice that doesn't happen in the other schools is that two hours of an IA's time is spent doing the cash, the, the, the counting function. And then our school secretary spends about, she says an hour a week, so divide her by five is point two times. She makes the deposits. In the other schools, all that work is done by the people in the cafeteria. So along with the $21,000 that we've had to put into the lunch program, our budget already absorbs the cost of that IA and the cost of that secretary. So if I added those on, that's more of a loss. So that's from our financial perspective. So that this was the roadmap. The report was the roadmap. And one of the things that we readily um, recognized was that we didn't know what type of person we needed to bring on board to help us fix these problems. So we were recommended Ms. Flory Page, um, who worked for 29 years at Deerfield Academy. She has worked as a consultant um, since her retirement and now runs her worked for a large a consulting firm out of New York and now has her own consulting. And she came on board, um, hit the ground running, and I'm going to let her talk a little bit about some of the changes that we've made uh, since the beginning of the year to address these issues.
So the man who came to do the evaluation is a colleague of mine who's been in this business for more than 40 years and has great expertise. He commented about the homemade French toast after he had been up here mentioned to me that he had seen that and was very impressed. Um, he, he did make some fairly strict recommendations as far as the staffing goes. And the objective that we've set for this coming year is to have 10 meals produced per man hour. And that's a big improvement from where we are right now, a big change from where we are right now, but should make it a difference. I was a little more lenient in the, the cuts that we made because I think that the potential is there to increase our participation. And in looking at the, the bid that you get through the collaborative, it's a great bid. I'll use just one unrelated example. Um, a three-gallon tub of hood vanilla ice cream cost just over $20 through the collaborative. And that same three-gallon tub of vanilla hood ice cream cost $29 plus dollars without the collaborative bid. So that's a huge improvement in the bid. So if we can take advantage of the, the collaborative's buying power and work together to, to use those things to our advantage, in addition, as Patty mentioned, the, the, the uh, commodity foods make a big difference. But we need to use them and not just put them in the freezer. So we're working on having the staff participate in the decisions to pick certain food items over other food items and to decide which things we're going to menu. The objective of looking at having a food service director over all of the program is really more to offer support than to make everything homogeneous. The schools all have different personalities, some large, some small, but that is not the objective. We don't want to take that away from them. We want Conway to represent the people in Conway and the program that's been here to continue and maybe continue very much as it is, but be a little bit more financially stable so that you're not having to worry about whether you have the summer program that we just heard about or you underwrite the loss in the program. I have been um, sending reports out on the balances due to all of the principals and the principals have been following up with emails. Kristen was very willing to take that report and look it over and see if there was something she could do to help people who are in trouble or to work out payments plans for people who owe money back to the schools. And we have been, we have been making some headway with collecting money from past due accounts. Um, I think that that's pretty much what I have to say, and I certainly would entertain questions. Well, I have a bunch of them, but um, before I get started, um, somebody else should say whatever they, guess, whatever they have. So is it, is it more realistic to see where we are with cutting Jeannie's hours after a year of this implementing? Oh, oh or I I, let me interrupt you. I didn't say what I said to all of the employees. This is just sticking a toe in the water. We don't know what exactly is going to work best, and none of the changes that we've made are permanent in any way. And we told all of the food service workers that when we met with them, that these changes can be temporary, they can be permanent, we can do better with buying, we can do better with participation, that we're just going to experiment and see what works for everybody. So it, it isn't even a year commitment at this point. We're going to evaluate every month and see how we're doing, particularly look at that easily, easily measured number meals per worker hour and see how we're doing with that number. And then we'll also be looking at the, the cost per meal and the overall expense. And is there a way to take out the IA and the secretary and add those duties to the manager so then her hours don't get cut? Mm, well, so what the way we're looking at it now is, is the other schools are doing it and we're not here. Mm -hmm. So we need to take them out, and the, and, and the two people that are here need to absorb those duties. But no, because they're doing it with the same amount of hours that, we're, but, we, that we reduced. But there's one district in this, I mean, one, one school in this district that literally gets stuff in a bag, like breakfast is but served. But we're not doing that anywhere, Ashley. Right. Everybody, we're, we're do, uh, part of this is that we're doing more scratch cooking. Um, and the, I, and you can... You know, I said my strongest scratch cooking school is Conway Grammar School. I've always said that. But does it seem like and, the person that is carrying the the healthiest lunch in the district is getting penalized by cutting her not, hours? Because it, it seems a little bit. It's not penalized. It, it's well, what she's, the, it's what she's the having a pay loss. Saying. That's being penalized, right? But but you're <clears> we're <throat> taking twenty one thousand dollars out of the school budget. Right, but. So that's what I'm saying with the, with the program, and we're getting stuff from the collaborative now, and we're going to maybe share some Kai's trees or stuff, right? So maybe that would be absorbed in these other policies with the with the computer system that you're going to implement for paying for things. But we've got the IA and the secretary running the computer system, and it needs to be 
The other schools are, are running the system with six and a half hours a day at, with their team lead, what we're going to be calling the team leader, is running the, doing that for six and a half hours. The, med, the, the numbers are showing we're overstaffed. We have too many hours for the number of meals we're serving. With, so let me give you one other figure here. Is and this again, it's it's not a personal issue against anyone. It's not it's not digging anyone's performance. It's saying those hours aren't needed. So if you're supposed to be producing 15 an hour and we're only doing eight, then that means there's room for you in those hours to come up. So yeah. when simple math, the cost of our food and our labor on average for the total year. Each meal cost us three dollars and forty-seven cents. We're only charging two dollars and eighty-five cents. So either we need to start charging three fifty a meal, or we need to lower the three forty-seven cost. And at this point, having done the analysis by both a professional and with and with me crunching the numbers, we're overstaffed and we're spending too much money on food. And in order to, to fix that, we have to reduce staff and control our food costs. Right. What's the... Um, uh, can you just say something? <coughs> I'm just concerned, Ashley. I get what you're saying about the breakfast, but I don't want to confuse breakfast with lunch. We have one school that serves breakfast, and we have about 20 to 30 kids taking breakfast at that school. Mm -hmm. And because it's such a small number, some of those things are you know, the pancake in the bag. But that's breakfast. We don't do that at lunch anymore. We're doing more scratch cook cooking at lunch. So you might be confused with breakfast at a larger school with a higher free and reduced count where students, oh, yeah. students get breakfast. I don't believe we serve breakfast in this school. No, no, no. it's the only school that's <coughs> yeah. mm -hmm. So that, that, I, I can see where you, you would, I'd be confused too with that. I'm curious what we're doing to increase the participation because I feel like at um, let's say not quite three but just rounding up to three dollars per meal if we add ten more kids that's thirty dollars per day and then we have to collect that money Michael so that's been well, our other challenge yes but the collection of the money non-payment from parents of the money that the children participate in? Is that the responsibility of the kitchen staff or is that no. somebody else's responsibility? No, that would, that, would be the, that would be the food service director and the principal's <laughs> responsibility. And it's come up here many times and we haven't cohered right. a policy to, to meet that yet. And when you put this, when, when Dr. Carey is putting this policy committee together, one of the new policies will be a meal charging policy. Which is mandated by USDA. We have to have a policy in place for handling meal charges. Yeah. Okay. Attached to Michael's question, what's the uh, participation over the last five years? How, how static, how fluctuating is that? Well, Conway, had, Conway does have one of the strong, probably the strongest participation. I don't have the five, I don't have five years where the participation data with me. But Conway is one of our strongest participation schools. It's just that our labor costs are too high and our food costs are too high. And the enrollment has gone down. So and you're, uh, and the, and exactly. In the five years, the enrollment has decreased and we've never adjusted, just like we may have cut a teacher or we may have cut an IA, the kitchen staff hours have never changed. And in fact, they've increased with a decrease in students. In participating students. Kids buying lunch. Right. But that doesn't... <coughs> If there's one thing I understand, it's food costs and food industry, because that's where my my work has been. So if you open a restaurant, let's just say, you're still going to have the same. It doesn't matter the enrollment. How's the enrollment? So ten, she can do her job. How? Five less kids. Five less mean kids less isn't going to make. She still has to clean all so the. If we're going right. to go with your analogy, if we were running a restaurant, we'd be out of business. <coughs> right. I, un I understand that. I just. I'm probably not saying this the best way, but it seems like Conway has been doing so good. We have a good lunch program. 
nutritionally it's probably the best. Right. Financially, financially it's, it's the worst. But I don't understand why cutting kitchen hours is the way to go. Well, on how that. else am I gonna? How else are we gonna find money? I don't Collect know. The money but I just don't code. think that this is the way to do it. Well, we got it down from three thousand down to eighteen hundred. That's great. I mean, sure. that's good. my only concern is that it's always that when you have, when there's personnel issues is. Do you wind up costing yourself more in the long run, but by possibly Skimping causing that person to go look for another job, and then you, by the time you lose somebody, hire somebody, train somebody, and do all that, your costs are way more than a, than a 7% in an already pretty low salary. So well, that is a little bit when, of a balance that has to be made in making so decisions like that. When, so when we talk about the salaries, um, one of the comments that was made in the report is that our salaries are higher than industry averages. So we started gathering, and we're just working on this now, we started gathering data from sur surrounding districts. And part of what um, Mrs. Page is going to help us do is restructure. Um, so we would, what we're looking at right now is that we would have a food service director. And each school would have a team leader and then a food service worker. And some schools have more than one food service worker because they, they have more students. Um, and what we want to do is then take those team leaders and make sure that they're all evenly compensated. Because there are variations between the schools of who gets paid what. Frontier, Deerfield, both have salary schedules. Conway, Sunderland, Waitley do not have salary schedules. Does that mean that the the value of the the team leader in Deerfield is any more than the team leader in Conway? No, because our expectation is that the responsibilities are the same. Right. So we're going to be looking at that, um, and but we we need more time, and we're going to give you some data in Oct uh, the October fifth meeting of what the structure would look like, and what we're hoping would be the proposed pay schedules. Um, and, and going from there. So yes, we may have lost some hours here, but then we may be adjusting the pay scale. I like the spirit of dipping the toe in the water, and I like that there's more eyes on, and that there's going to be a lot of collaborative decision making. Are we making premature decisions before we do this pilot? The right? I like the bulk purchasing. Um, We've been I, doing that. That's not new. No, that's not no, new. no, that will be new. Yeah, yeah, in terms of the entire district. I thought we've always per, used the We've all used the bids. But, uh, so we all use the same <laughs> bid, but we don't always purchase from the same bids. Or we now we can buy one, five, you know, five pounds of cottage cheese and give one to each school rather than each school buying five and sticking them in the freezer. Yeah, and how that works with schools wanting to preserve a unique menu. I mean, your point's well taken. My daughter Ruby says, it's turkey dinner today. It's her favorite meal. Mm -hmm. Love the relationship with Boyden's. There's unique things about neighborhoods and towns. Mm -hmm. um, but with, you know, I just wonder, are we making decisions before we see how this works? That's my question, mm -hmm. uh, you know. Um, yeah. Because there's a lot of different things right. being put into place now. I right. thought, our, you know, you put that pretty clearly. Right. Right. I, I think what um, we're doing is we're trying a little bit of everything, and we're, we're sampling from the buffet, if you will. Mm -hmm. Pardon my food service yes. analogy. Yes. But we're we're looking at different things that we can do to see what does in fact work. Mm -hmm. I didn't make the drastic cuts when we worked on schedules that my colleague had recommended because I think that trying to improve the overall performance of the program is well worth it. I've seen. Examples, as Patty just pointed out, the, the difference with having to buy things in greater quantity than you know you're going to use, and you balance, well, is it better to buy the big package and waste some, or is it better to buy the small package and pay more? So if we can buy the big package and share it among the four small schools, it definitely is going to be a better arrangement for everyone, and that's the difference that we're talking about that we haven't done yes. before, is to do the sharing of the products. We had half a case of bananas at Sunderland and half a case of bananas at Waitley this week, and I brought them myself and transported them. So being able to do some things like that, right. that we can work together on trying to be more economical will make a difference, as opposed to really coming in and hacking things up. We want, we want to gently tweak everything and, and support it and see where we can make the best, the best mm -hmm. decisions. And the problem is, uh, what to your question, are we doing this prematurely? I don't have, we don't have... Conway can't get the benefit of having Flory if they're not going to pay their share of having Flory, and that's the mechanism we don't have. 
So Highway needs to be on board in order to, to reap these benefits, they have to help pay mm -hmm. for the person that's going to try and lay out these plants. Mm -hmm. Which didn't, we did vote on that, didn't we? No, no we were asking you to do that in October. October. On the joint meeting. But that's already been put in place? No. No, we're asking for one, di one director just to just to oversee the five programs, not so to Lori's micromanage. not here for long. No, she's an intern. So we have to hire someone. So, so we need to. We, we're going to be putting a job description together, and then once we vote in October that we're going to hire one person, then we will go out and hire that person. But that we already made personnel reductions without. But we didn't vote on that. You don't need to. You don't have to vote on that. I thought we always voted on personnel. That's the spirit of my question. Not, you know. not individual. I mean, if we were adding a new position, that's what you have to vote on. But then it's up to the, to the program managers and to Dr. Carey to change the hours. So if we, so let's say we, um, let's say we had two sixth grades, and then all of a sudden we don't have two sixth grades anymore. We would reduce that sixth grade teacher. We don't have to ask permission. Okay. It's just not needed. Okay. But if we ha if we only had one sixth grade teacher and we needed two sixth grade because of a population boom, we would have to come to you and ask you, can we hire a second sixth grader? And the reason that we did go ahead and manipulate the labor to a, to a certain extent is because the the difference was so dramatic, as Patty pointed out, it was so obvious that every school had more staff than the industry standard, and to start and just reduce it slightly. We didn't cut the, the three extra hours that Patty's talking about here compared to Waitley. We took, what, what did we take an hour We and took half? an hour and a half an from hour each and a half school. As opposed an hour and a half a day from each school. Which is But you're still over, you're almost three hours a day overstaffed than Waitley who only has ten less kids. So there's still some calibrating to do there. Mm -hmm. But we started by making that, that smaller reduction to see what impact that would have and if the program participation could improve. And again, the purchasing, because yeah. it, it was very obvious that we are in a number of instances just at a very superficial look, buying more than what we need because it's a good price, better than buying the small quantity at the high price, but nowhere near as good as buying the large quantity at the lower price and sharing it. So, right. Or using the free food <laughs> in menu planning. And the other advantage of having your... Um, umbrella food service director is that it gives you a person between the program and DESE so that you don't have, you know, the big godfather looking down on you. There's someone in between who can do routine inspections and routine recommendations and be the representative for an audit coming in and, and tour the person around. So it sort of takes the onus off of that process as well. Mm -hmm. You have another question I can see. Yes. Well, I just, I just did a rough calculation of if <coughs> 10 students on average participated for roughly half the year, like a hundred days, a little more. That would be a three thousand uh, dollar, you know, twenty five hundred dollar uh, increase in payment. So you're, you're the, seeing what I was seeing when I looked at the overall process. Yeah. To add participation is definitely yeah. more customers solve a variety of ills. So, so we can have more kids eat lunch. So I'm curious to know what plans we have and, or discussions there have been that we can do to increase participation in Conway? Because if we have the best, if we feel we have the best food service program, you know, we're proud of the scratch cooking that we are accomplishing here and advertise that more. I, I have children that attend the school. Uh, I wasn't aware of the, the level of um, care that is taken to feed my children. And um, I feel like if more parents were aware of that, they might decide to participate mm -hmm. more. Definitely. And then the other question I have is, um, you know, we're currently charging 285 for a meal. Um, we just increased it last year. That was my question. I, I January. Didn't, <laughs> yeah. So in January it went from... To 285. From 275. So there's a 10 cent increase. Oh, yeah. okay. So, and we may have to yeah. be increasing it for next year. We're waiting for the, yeah. uh, for the new metrics to come down from the USDA about what. So we may be coming to you in December, January for FY19 um, right. increase. Is, they give us a formula based is the, on um, October's numbers. So my question is, is the community at large ever surveyed in terms of, yeah. of the pricing of our school meals? Because as a community school, we're we're interested in 
our students um, receiving a certain type of care with their food, I guess. They are, except still a certain population doesn't pay their bills every year. Well, so. I mean, that's, a, that's kind of what I'm seeing solution. actually is, is okay. the... If we collected what's owed, we would be in a better spot. Yeah. Absolutely. But looking but at... It's been a process. But well, looking at the sheet, it says that our program net loss... Sorry, let me put my glasses The net loss here. was $5,912. Yeah, so nearly $6,000 for the program net loss but the uncollected school balance was 1800 So to me, it seems like the program loss is not always related to the mm -hmm. non-payment. And Michael, that's where I'm finally going to get some true answers with Meals Plus. Okay. Because if you look, in FY14-15, we only lost $600. But we had $2,100 of bad debt. In $1,953, we had no idea. I could not reconcile that right. number. So there's a difference, and then the Drive second crazy, year, doesn't it, Pat? It does. <laughs> and then the, the second year we lost seventeen hundred dollars. So we almost we doubled our loss, and our uncollected went to thirty eight hundred, and there was another three thousand dollars not in the bank account. Right. So where does that? Right. So now uh, we, I spent time with mm -hmm. Laura and with Kristen, mm -hmm. and as you can see, last year we had no unknown variance. Mm -hmm. But interestingly enough. Now we have a huge loss. So that's telling me something's not reporting. Either the sales numbers are wrong, the, the free and reduced claims are not right. So, something's, every time I pop down a weasel, it's popping up somewhere else. So now we, we asked you to put in Meals Plus, which is a computerized system. We'll get accurate counts, and I'll be able to more readily identify to you what is the problem. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're saying our participation is high, but we're going to get real numbers, not scratches on a piece of paper. Yeah. Jen? Does, does the well, meal, um, sorry, does the Meals Plus uh, decrease the need of hours for the school accounting? And, like the we expect that it will, and it will improve the reporting as well. Already, Kristen okay. has been receiving the balance due reports that before were pretty cumbersome to create. It's easy for me to run that once a week and send it to her. I could run it every day if she wanted to see it every day. Very simple. So the, the reporting will be improved and the tracking will be very, very much different. And the letters will come right out to go home to parents. And we can do that every Friday. We can and they run can be emailed as well as mailed. And we can, exactly. We can email it. So okay. instead of maybe once a month, they're going to get it every week. So they're not lost in a backpack. Right. Exactly. And That's not, my concern. Right. Yeah. And not only will it tell you whether you owe money, it'll tell you if you're if you're prepaid, that your child still has a $25 credit that, you, that they're working off of. Yeah. I like the idea also of taking the child out of the loop. Yeah, and absolutely. An email to the parents. Right. That's a good choice. Mm -hmm. Jen, do you want it to get Well, on? I'm wondering if we should consider sending a survey home to families and asking what their experience is with our lunch program. If they're not participating, why is that? If they are participating, what what is working for them? What isn't working for them? It, it seems like that's something we do a lot in our district, reaching out to the families and finding out what they think. If we're wondering about the truth in regards to participation and why bills aren't getting paid, why don't we put together a short, friendly survey and get some answers? We've done that in, our two, in two other of our elementary schools that we were struggling with. And not only did we, not, not only did we um, survey the, the parents, we surveyed the children. Mm -hmm. So we asked the children, um, because here, here, let me give you another example of how, how we're not using data. I'm going to go back to Ashley's pancakes in a bag, okay? If we serve that, and only six kids take that, that should tell you, let's not serve this again. But we don't. We keep serving it, and they keep not eating it, and we keep paying for it. Now Meals Plus is going to tell us exactly which meals do the kids love? Which meals are they taking? Breakfast. We can run reports Breakfast by the item, so we right. can tell which items have sold as well as how many meals. And and let me tell you that that problem to me is not an uh, is not a Conway problem because I do think that Jeannie has the pulse on her population and she knows and. Jeannie doesn't. Jeannie wouldn't be caught dead serving pancakes in a bag because she hand dips French toast. So that I don't think is a Conway issue, but it is an, a, an issue we have in others. But it is the power of this program that'll give us that data. So then maybe Jeannie can refine her recipe where if she knows that only you know she only makes half a batch instead of a full batch. 
she'll be able to refine a little bit more. So, um, I have uh, I have a bunch of questions, but I I didn't want to like just dominate the conversation like I. You may ask do. the same questions. Um, the, the, at the frontier meeting, I um, well, I, I sort of came out against a lot of what I can perceive as the proposal. It's still sort of kind of incoherent to me, but. Um, the uh, one of the things that Patty you did not do in this and you did not do it at Frontier either is disclose the expenses involved in getting to the solution. The, the fact that I don't know what expenses you're asking me to disclose. Well, you, you, you introduced a consultant, but it's up to me to draw out the information about how much the consultant is being paid and how much we well, pay. If you so ask far. me, I will answer. No one's asked me that question. I know. I, I well, would, so if I, I'm not I asked would, a question, I why would, would I prefer not to be the one that has to like be the bad guy and ask those kinds of questions. Um, but I'm sure they'll be asked at the joint meeting. Well, the, the, it, you know, I, I brought all this stuff out. That that, that report that we saw cost us $5,000. That um, the, the consultant who was here before us, thank you for coming again and, and being available to answer questions. Um, your, rate, your, your rate is $125 per hour. You started in, in August. August. And I did that. I did the math, and 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 you said that last that at the frontier meeting you're working um, ten to ten to twelve hours a day. As we all do. But that, so I mean that's like twelve hundred dollars a day for a consultant, and we're talking about. I mean, this is just like saving a dollar to spend, uh, save, spending a dollar to save a dime, and then waking up and doing the same thing over and over again the I'm next gonna, day. I'm going to disagree with that because. What we've been doing for the five years that I've been here is continuing losing money. And then every time I make a suggestion, we continue to lose money because nothing changes. So obviously, I realize I don't have the people on staff to make the changes to stop losing money. So I'm smart enough to know that I don't know, so I'm going to go hire an expert who can help me put a road map to change. And yes, that costs money. Sometimes you have to spend money to make money. That's the same. But I don't hide anything. I am the most transparent I, 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 person. I, Patty, you didn't hide anything. I was just saying. Well, no, when no, you no, sit no, there, no, Mr. Cantor, no, and say, I no. didn't disclose, ask you me. Did, you I'll give, tell you. You didn't give voice to it. I didn't, you didn't hide anything. You didn't hide anything. I didn't say that you hid anything. Look at you. You're going to... Yes, I am. Because um, this is the second meeting that I feel that you are personally attacking me and that I have some hidden agenda here. No. All I'm trying to do is stop the flood of money going out the bottom of the food service program. I get that. This doesn't do that. I, I don't see how this does that. This just, we're digging a hole that's deeper every single day. That we're, we're, we're Well, not if you have a new system at, when, at the end of it, Phil. I mean, clearly the system is not working. So, so the only so, way to change the system so, so, is but, to. But there, there's so much to that. Like first of all, we're we're um, we're just the 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 hours are being reduced because of a formula, an industry standard, um, of which I could find no evidence and uh, no no it's not in any peer reviewed. It, it is even on the reimbursement claim form. It is an industry standard that is used by school districts everywhere. USDA in the asks United us States. to fill out those numbers on our claim forms every month. Mm. It is an industry standard number. It's a metric that all school districts use to measure the productivity of their staff. And it's a one size fits all kind of a thing. No, that no it's not. There's, which is there's, why, a, there's a range. Which is why there's a range. We did not cut to what he recommended. We took the cut that we felt we could. So you cut hours, but did you, you didn't cut any work responsibility. Well, yes, we actually did. You did. Yes, we did. By bringing so, in Meals Plus, a huge amount of work has been taken off the table. And mm -hmm. Meals Plus is not something that you just have delivered and plug it in and it works. It has to be coded. A fair amount of the time that Patty and I have been working has been customizing that database for Conway, for Sunderland, for Waitley, and tweaking it both at Frontier and at Deerfield Elementary to be divided into two schools and to share with the other schools all that information. All that information is custom and it's just for your so your program. I just googled meals per labor hour. Are you over are you overstaffed or understaffed? School Nutrition Association. Meals per labor hour for Kenny EAT. Sample staffing guidelines for on-site production. <coughs> So just put it in your Google, and meals per labor hour, you're going to get a, a ton of information. 
It's not one size fits all. It's a guideline to help you decide how you're doing. And the number was so dramatically different from the industry standard that we started looking at it. And as I said at the beginning of the meeting, I didn't want to just slash at the program until I had some sense of what everyone was doing and how else we could improve our programs. So, so we've made some fairly gentle so cuts initially. Are, if people are working in, in the kitchens of our schools now are now suddenly saying that they feel that they are being pressured to work off the clock both to do no, prep no, and no, to do cleanup. No, they absolutely are not being pressured nope. to do that. They all sat in a meeting with Patty and me and were told that because we were evaluating how many hours it takes to do the job, they need to accurately record the amount of time that they need to work not what they think we want to hear. We have told them the opposite of what you're telling them, or saying we've told them. Patty told them, and I've told them, and we've reinforced that we are doing a study with them. We want to know how this is working. Are you able to get all the work done in this period of time? If you're having to stay later, what task are you having to do after hours? We want to know how it's working. This is not just a blind cut, it's a and it's study. not a permanent change. It is a time study. Thank you, Mrs. Campbell. That's exactly what Thank it you. is. So, um, Yeah. So next year as a school committee, I think we're going to be able to have a much more informed discussion. Yes. I think we're going to get data that we haven't well, had before. I think you're going to get next, next year. <laughs> sure. and, that, and that's great. And, um, you know, I, we've had systematic net losses and we're going to have a lot more clarity about what that is. You know, my, again, I'm just going to float the question when we talk about personnel cuts. Do we know where these program net losses are coming from? Are we making those decisions before this data tells us what food is being cooked and not served? You know, participation is an issue, but, uh, you know, I realize we have to hire someone that knows food. I don't. I don't think any of us at this table, maybe Ashley, she's been in the industry. But we, we have to know some information to make decisions, do something collaborative. Well, you have to imagine that a little hash mark on a piece of paper versus a computerized sure. yes. information system so is going to be a little system. more accurate. Right. So we're going to have right. a so more So we're implementing that system, right. which takes some right. expertise that clearly we needed to seek out. Right. The other and thing is that coming in as an outsider, I'm able to take a, an outside perspective and look at the program with fresh eyes. And I'm hearing tonight that you had a fabulous summer program. And the cost of that summer program is less than the loss of what we're talking about for the food service program. Mm -hmm. So if you were to under, underwrite that ongoing loss, it could cost you that summer program that I, as an outsider, just heard wonderful things about. Mm -hmm. those, those are the kind of decisions you're making. And I'm here to help you make good decisions about the food service program. Who says that it's wrong as a principal to lose money on your food service? How long seriously, would you stay seriously. Well, we, we all just we all just assume that if we're losing money on food service, people's got hours got to be cut. So let me ask you a question. So we've lost mm -hmm. money since I've been on school committee, and we've never cut hours. So and I've been on school committee now probably over ten years in two different stints, mm -hmm. and we have never cut hours, and we've lost money every single year. Some Always of that, and some of that was money. our choice. We chose. No, but I'm saying we you're saying not, why are we chose doing not to that? Sue We're that. now looking at we it. We chose not to sue people for bad debts. We our did. decision was used against our food service people mm -hmm. to to cut their hours. So I don't. Well, I don't think it's that clear cut. Um, I look at it this way. It, the, this became this becomes an issue two years ago when the law changed. We could always run the account in the negative. It was allowed. That's why when you read in the when you talk about people, you read in the paper about Pioneer having a two hundred thousand deficit. That was probably over 10, 15 years deficit. Now you're not allowed to do that. Two years ago, they changed the law. Your books have to be in balance. There have to be a zero or a dollar in that school lunch fund, or the town gets a ding on their free cash account. Okay, so. We now have to take money from our budget, which we're supposed to be paying teachers and IAs and buying computers and, and educating our children with, and we're using it to subsidize a lunch program that we feel could be improved and reduced. So now when we go, we have to, if you're not going to vote for this, we're going to have to put the money in the budget. And if we put the money in the budget, it means we're going to have to cut something else. So what are we going to cut? Are we going to cut the library books? Are we going to cut an IA? What are we going to cut so that the town will approve our budget with, with adding money for a loss that we could fix, that we could try and fix? Do you think the town's going to support that? Do you think the select board's going to support that? 
Well, we have to weigh our priorities as a committee and make yes, those do. decisions, right? Mm -hmm. That's correct. And we want to be able to have information to make that decision, and we're <coughs> early in the process. Absolutely. That's early my point. That's yeah, correct. And we're going to have month. a more informed discussion. But, and, I mean, you know. if the staff knows the right. goal is to increase participation. In productivity and, both. And, right. And then potentially hours come back to the budget. I mean, that, you know, and but other things make that system changes. easier. Right, or rate changes. See, we, and the cl goals are clear about what they need to do. We know that federal food uh, reimbursement is not kept up with impl inflation. I was I read something about that this summer that, that uh, when they started federal reimbursement for lunches in 1976, <laughs> that that money has only doubled since then. And that if that actually kept up the way that the law was written, they'd be reimbursing schools five or six dollars a meal right now. And that they issue a waiver every year, just like the state does, to get out of their legal obligations. Um, but on that, I will agree with you, Mr. Cantor. It's an unfunded mandate. And, and so, mm -hmm. at at what point does the un every year the portion of the mandate that is unfunded creeps up and up and up? And at what point is do you just say, okay, you can't? We cannot have the consequences of this unfunded mandate be borne by our lunch staff. It's not right. It's not fair. It's not just. But um, it's not punishing. This. I, 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 this is not a personal attack of anything. If all, if if, if they're saying that we we're not selling enough product, then you have to cut the costs or improve the participation. Right, but which, I'm telling you that well, here in Conway, that margin's very small. Mm -hmm. You've got great participation. But and we're it, spending too much on food, probably which is driving the participation, because the food is good. So, but it's costing too much, so something's got to come out the bottom. It's so simple want, math. A plus B needs to equal C. And in this case, zero. And we need to start budgeting for for lunch. So we, the the idea the idea that this should be uh, a, 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 new, a, a revenue neutral thing is old fashioned. Um, so may I just speak something? Yeah. So I made a point. We're very early in the process. The thing, the problem is, as you pointed out, Flory is a consultant. She's not staying here forever. We need to fill the position of a food service director. That's what we're going to ask you to vote on in October. You, as a school committee, you have a choice. You have a choice. Do we want to continue with this loss and building the loss into our budget and consequently perhaps taking something, from, something else from the students to pay the lunch program but the lunch needs to be built in. Seven thousand dollars last year. Seven thousand seven hundred. So almost eight thousand dollars. That needs to be put in the budget somewhere. So you have the choice, and that's what we're trying to say. And we're trying to tell you that we would be remiss if we did not try to help bring ideas forward to stop the loss. And we're putting the effort in, and we're making the changes. And I know, as a superintendent, any change is painful, painful for people, literally painful. They can't do it. It's so hard. But we do do it. We end up doing it, and in the end, it's... Mm -hmm. I went through this last year when we moved our offices, our central offices, to Frontier Regional. The world was going to end, literally. We were dying. But guess what? We moved, it, there was no incident, everything went smooth, we were all happy. So the bottom line is, you do have the choice. We're not telling you what to do. We're offering you sound solutions to a problem that you have had year after year after year. That all of us have not just Conway. Mm -hmm. And this is not about a person. It's not about children not eating food or parents not paying bills. This is a problem that happens everywhere. We're trying to help remedy it. We have seen schools, Springfield schools, they were a million dollars in debt. They put these practices into place and they turned around. They're making literally a million dollars. I know this. I spoke with the assistant superintendent. I know this is happening, and it can be done. Do we want to do that hard work here? Maybe we don't. I don't know. 
But I, I'm telling you, it's really your decision. It's, it's not ours. And so we don't want to have hard words or hard feelings or any kind of anger. We just want to tell you there, there is a way. We're asking for a chance to see if we can. Well, it's an assessment process. Combine it's a full-on assessment process. Paulette, were you trying to get in here? Well, I just had a question whether... Um, from the Meals Plus, we'll have data to find out the amount of time it takes to do scratch cooking. That's because I imagine, you know, when I cook at home, that takes a lot longer than if I pour something from a box, you know, or take something from the bag. So since we're going that route, we want more of that, and Conway does a lot of that. Will we be able to find out that data, that amount of time to do that, which we want, which is healthier food? Will we be able to find that out from the Meals Plus, how that's working People out? And back do that we need more practice, that? which we already but, do. You know, yeah. that, that's going to go back to, that, that's going to fl flow out when, when they come back to us and say, listen, we yeah. really like making the meatloaf with the mashed potatoes, yes. but I couldn't do, I couldn't prep that many meals in six and a half hours. Yes. That, that's, the on, that's the note on, that's the note on the timesheet that we're asking oh, them okay. to make. Yeah. We so, have to stay later today because we made a turkey dinner and it took us X amount of time. To we're do, counting on the yeah. workers, the workers are the experts so in this area and we're counting on them to all, that. exactly. Right. Is there any way that just the computer system between that and Jeannie being aware of cutting food costs and maybe a survey? That those three things will equal our number, get our numbers closer. Where, but that would okay. So, so that the only problem with that, Ashley, is, it, it, and I understand, Ira, your point is that we're asking you to vote in October to join the year of assessment. You're either going to do that or you're not going to do that. So, if you're not going to vote in October to join to part pay for the year of assessment with the with the food service director, then you're sort of on a raft on your own. How many hours will that director work? Probably 40. 40. Well, we can get a survey out before October. Okay. October 5th is your meeting. That's when you're voting. Two. Today is the uh, 21st. More information is great. If any, any information that you can gather and share is, is valuable. So about paying for this. So the... The, the, th the thing about the Frontier Food Service is that we knew last year, every time we opened the door, every day of school, it lost close to $300, between two and $300. Um, and, we, and we knew that from like first day of school on. It took it, this, it, it was till the summer, till, <coughs> till anything was done, um, till, till an idea, and, and you, this is an idea. It's an idea. Ideas are good. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the, it wasn't. Except they lead to change, which people well, don't well, like. Well, I mean, at least it's an idea. We we knew we knew that there needed to be some. There needed to. We knew that it needed an idea. An idea, eventually emerged. Um, the 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 thing about it is that it's not in the frontier budget. And no, it is because we're not we don't we're not paying the food service person we had last year. So it, so so right now, dear uh, Waitley, Sunderland, and. Frontier are the only ones paying for Miss Page's expertise, but everyone's getting the benefit of it. That's why we're asking you to join on October fifth to help pay for the expertise for the roadmap. But the, so um, the previous Frontier Food Service person was like 50, was like fifty thousand. Right. So and that's and, why and, I want to get. And, 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 and no and, offense, Flory. I want it Flory out as quickly as possible and get so, me my. So <laughs> so. Get me the person I need <laughs> at a regular salary. And, and, so, uh, and you've just gotten a database for free if you want to look at it that way because I coded your database and it took me hours and hours and hours to get your computer up and running. And I talk regularly with your staff about it and it's costing you nothing right now. Right. That's a freebie right now. Mm -hmm. And we're doing some of the man we're doing some of the paperwork too, and you're not paying for that. Well, um, I Let's did, keep that going. Uh, I, I, but, so, so That's I, not an idea. So That's an idea. It is an idea. That's so, not one of the so, so here's so, so you're instituting these changes now. Then, then you hope to hire a food service director who will be responsible, who's, who will be responsible for making budget. To implement the changes and uh, yes, exactly. For creating, and, for creating but, a budget. But, but you're going to hang over his or her head these 
consultant mandated per change no, procedures. No, no. they're no. suggestions, Phil. That's when, what and consult in, people pay for consultant so reports all the time. So when we sometimes you follow them, when sometimes we you don't. People, we're going to be asking them, what is your vision of a food service program? Tell us something innovative that you initiated that was very successful. Show us a month or two months worth of menu planning. And then we're going to look at the candidate's work and match it to what we hope our goals are, and then we would find the right person for the right job. And after a year, part of the informed discussion is, and this is part of Ashley's question, in addition to what Meals Plus tells us, will, that, will we need a 40-hour person? There's five schools. I think we will always need a 40-hour person. Because, uh, I right. i mean, I'm doing fi the financials for five schools, and I right. work a lot more than 40 hours. Mm -hmm. And there, I mean, if we're bulk <coughs> buying, that person is going to have to help with distribution right. and, and there's everything of that kind of stuff. Yeah. Then you have to build the schools, and there's paperwork that's going to be generated. Unless you want the principal driving around to go pick up food and schlep it Yeah, I like that idea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so... The, the, the assumption then, so this pays off if you can find someone that will work at that lower rate. Well, I mean, uh, I, 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 I'm going to, we're going to hopefully offer the rate to be marketable. I'm not, it's going to be lower than a, a private consultant, yes, but it, we're going, I said, we're doing salary surveys of our neighboring districts to see what they pay their food service director, their food service workers, and we're going to try and get everyone in a line, in alignment with the same salary schedule. And, and, and that will probably come to you probably December to January to vote on. And it's not a full a year-round full-time position anymore. It's, it's, it 40, it's 40 hours a week for the school for year. 210 days. And um, so, so if uh, the, the success of this whole plan depends on you being able to hire someone at, uh, at the rate that you anticipate instead of at a rate that's higher. And right. that's the success of every hire, right. is if you get the right person for the right money for the right job. Mm -hmm. That's but how shouldn't, you know you've succeeded. But shouldn't we be doing uh, it? We don't it, have a job description, Phil. We don't. Why not? We, I, I, because like, that, that's what we're telling you. We're okay? trying to structure the program. We're trying to put a structure in place. Okay, so but that's this, the job this of the has person been, you this hire. Has been, no, this has no, been my not. Mrs. Pages every day. She comes in my office and she says, where's your data on this? And I have to say, I don't know. I don't have it, the, the, the person in this position before, but can we find it anywhere? No, no documentation exists. Are there training manuals for the schools that already had Meals Plus? Like, how do you do this? Were there training manuals? Nope, they're nowhere to be found. So part of the problem is, is that I, I couldn't the hire someone two months ago there. because what exactly. was I going to do, throw them into a fire pit? There's, there's no data. There's nothing. There's, there's just nothing. So now we're working first step, job description. Second step, best practices and procedures for our districts. You will file the claim on this date. You will run these reports. You, you order on this date. You decide on your diversion in March. You set up a calendar for the person so they know what date, what, where are your de de deadline-driven dates. And that's what she and I are putting together right now. We're working on laying the foundation for the person to be successful. We want to bring someone in who can be successful. And if you were to bring someone in right now, I can pretty much guarantee you they would have failed if you had hired someone in September to take on this responsibility. They'd quit by now. They would have quit by now. Next okay. year, like, it would be questions that will be asked is how much money have we saved? Correct. What, what is Meals Plus telling us in terms of our clientele and what they want to eat? Mm -hmm. And most, and, and this is important, what's the ratio of we're regionalizing our food delivery, kind of mm -hmm. like transportation and special education? What's going to be the ratio of regionalization and maintaining unique aspects of what the schools produce for the kids? Mm -hmm. You know, like turkey dinners, boiled maple syrup, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I can't speak to the unique qualities of the other schools. But next year, with all that data we get, right. those are, that's the kind of conversation that's informed that will be a good discussion. So right? what, what, what Flory has found very quickly, and she mentioned it, is that each school has their own personalities. Mm -hmm. And what she's mm -hmm. doing right now um, with the three schools that she's working with, and, and, and she is working a little bit um, um, with Deerfield as well because they call and ask questions, mm -hmm. um, she doesn't want to take that uniqueness away. Hmm? We, that, that's not what we want. 
But what Flory's doing is she's empowering every food service worker, every single one of them, to say, hey, I have an idea. What if we did this? And, or we did this once, and it was really successful. The kids really enjoyed it. They're getting a voice. They're participating. They're not just doing what they're told to do anymore. They're empowered to be part of a team, and they're, and they're, they're really kind of excited about it. A little, bit, a little bit afraid because they haven't had a voice and opinion in the past. Uh, I mm -hmm. think we should go forward with this, and I'm looking forward to what information it delivers that we'll talk about next year. To continue to make these we'll decisions. I don't think you have to wait until next year. You don't have to wait until next year. I think it's going Good. to be an ongoing conversation over the course of the year. Yep. Okay. So yes. Can I just find sure. a few things we keep talking about industry standards and simple math? The, given the size of our school, right now you're serving about 90 kids per day. We only have, what, 140? In order to reach our industry standards, every single kid in the school would have to eat hot lunch. And it doesn't matter what you serve, that'll never happen. Mm -hmm. the, right? The year, right. The, the, what Desi would like us to do is be serving 70% of the, of the population. And, 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 and I, uh, as Pretty I close. said before, yeah. I think Conway is our highest participation. I think you're right around, hovering around 59%. And that's the highest we have in the five schools. It could be but it's, mm -hmm. but it's still not 70, and that's what Desi is saying. And, and I, believe me, I don't, <coughs> I don't, if they say 70%, I get it. But if we don't get to the 70%, then we have to make the changes we can't be producing for 70% and only serving 59%. Well, that's probably attainable to get it up by that. But I th and that's what I'm saying. If we, if we start focusing in on some right. data and saving some food costs because we know who is eating and what they're eating, we can achieve. Go ahead. All right, just a couple more things. Um, this is going way back. Uh, we don't serve meat sauce at the Conway Graham School for Pasta, there are meatballs. So we we're talking about doing that. Conway does sell meatballs with their lunch program. Another thing, um, frozen chicken nuggets, we do chicken tenders here, like exactly what we were talking about. Not the diversion that you've spoken about, I understand, but there are certain times, like you said before, certain things you may want to pay a premium for to get a better quality. I, I totally get it, budgets and all of that, but you run a lunch program, you can't say it's like a restaurant because it's not, because the person running it doesn't get to set the price. Right. You know what I mean? You, you're working with a free and reduced. I mean, you talk about a loss at the end of the year, and that makes complete sense, but you could theoretically up the prices. You don't want to do that because we're talking about grade school kids, and we don't want people coming in and spending $7 a meal. Right, so the, more than one kid. So at a certain so point, you have to realize, you know, you, you could hit a loss because you want to keep your prices where they are. Food costs are going up. The wages are going to continue to go up with those massive increases they get every July 1st. I mean, I don't think I, 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 I'm not in disagreement because do I think that we'll ever get to break even? That would be the goal. But right now, I just want to reduce the loss. Right. We do have we'll look at two possibilities related questions to reduce to that. the loss. Yeah. Um, because Ira was, Ira was mentioning the regionalization of the food service that we'll be able to buy in bulk in that. Perhaps that would be the responsibility of the person that's hired to fill the I'm proposed sure it position. Would yeah. They would have to is oversee it, it. Is it currently the school manager's uh, job description to do the purchasing? Correct. So that burden comes off of them. Okay. And okay, so that's so some of the things that are going to come off of the people doing the jobs now is that they won't be doing the purchasing. Um, so any they of the purchasing or the bulk purchasing? Any of the purchasing. The purchasing would all be done centralized. Would they be still making the recommendations of what to purchase yes, for Yes, they absolutely would have digital. to do that. And Men menu planning, they will participate. So there's a time requirement in that, okay. I think also, this is a good time to point out that the things that you like here in Conway are not things that would only be enjoyed in Conway. <laughs> We would take good ideas from all of the schools and incorporate them into other schools. We have given the food service workers the first time ever opportunity to collaborate and letting them share things that they do and what works for them. And things that are very popular in one school are probably going to be really popular in others. While you have unique personalities, you're not a thousand miles away from each other and you have some real common roots, as Lynn pointed out at the beginning of the meeting. Mm -hmm. So things that you do that are good, we may want to do in other schools. Right. Or there may be an easier way, a, a less labor-intensive way of accomplishing the same task. So, so I thought you had said at the Frontier meeting that you want to do centralized meal planning, centralized menu planning. Yes. So. And, and we want to have the food service workers. The so, so we roast turkeys and peel potatoes. 
that's not going to be a centralized, no matter what you say, Frontier's no, not going to do that. Frontier is already peeling potatoes and making mashed potatoes. I don't know that there is a school in the district that uses instant mashed potatoes anymore. So yes, other schools do make mashed potatoes from those brown things that come out of the ground. Mm -hmm. And we made meatloaf from scratch. So we didn't just stick a turkey in an oven, we made meatloaf with our hands and put it in ovens. And it was very successful. The objective is to improve the food everywhere, not to diminish the quality of the food anywhere, and not to have it be the same everywhere, but to come up with the things that work well for everybody and increase the number of times that we offer those things. So you're promising us a lot uh, that we will no longer, possibly no longer lose $7,000 a month. A year. A year. Uh, thank you. Um, but, but. To, in order to do that, we have to sign on to a 40-hour-a-week person Your at, share at, of for a our share, hour. which will far exceed seven thousand dollars. But it's not going to be. But, but so so in that case, so you look at it this way, and that's what we're going to put in the budget. So you're going to save us money by losing us more money. No, no. It depends. Uh, it would remain to be seen. Well, we know it's going to cost us more than seven thousand dollars. We do. So, what? But we know we've never improved the system, so it has the potential to help improve the system. Have to see what the or not, and then we get then we go back to the basics. We may vote that it's not worth it, but we have to see. We have to find out. It might be worth a try. I mean, there'll have to be a larger discussion in October, right? No, because it's the. And sometimes you do have to spend money to. Save money. I mean, the Meals Plus system is a good example of that. All right. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Um, uh, you know, we're spending our money on a consultant. And at the end of it, at the end of the, <laughs> at, after like $50,000 of spend on a consultant, then we will think about hiring a food service person. The consultant you're, you're can't implement the, the changes right that the consultant is going to find we need to implement. The consultant <laughs> is only pointing out, the, has the knowledge and the thing that, that we're not doing right now that we could be doing, and it's going to need a person <coughs> to do that. I mean, just the DESI stuff that is put on the school system. I mean, how many years ago did DESI come in and, you know, had a fit about things your mother did in the kitchen? You know, we had another whole meeting about that, okay? <laughs> and things had to change and whatever. And, you know, and we didn't necessarily want those changes. Kids don't like those changes. They liked to be in the kitchen or near the kitchen or the other things that they're no lo longer allowed to do because <laughs> Jesse came in and said we had to change them. But you we know? did it, Elaine. We Jeannie, did. Jeannie did it. And she then did. And got glowing reviews on her next review. Totally. Yes, Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Somebody that is willing to change and stay current while keeping quality. Absolutely. So, I mean... You can't. It, it would be a waste of money to hire a consultant and get all these ideas and recommendations, and then have nobody to implement them. I mean, you can't change a system with nobody. You know, we can't afford to keep her around. <laughs> well, how how is it okay to have her around just day after day and still not have anybody in the pipeline to like not have the hiring process because started? We, we haven't because posted we need, a job we need yet. Your vote. We need your vote. <laughs> We, we need, need a job. We need to ask the, the combined school committees to vote, will they do this? And then, depending on which committee says what or how it goes, then we have to figure out how much we can pay from that. So if the Conway School Committee says, we're pulling out, we want to be on our own, okay, so we're not, we're not going to include you And in I would this. bet it would cost us more in the long run, potentially, because then we have to find a way to implement things that come down anyway. Well, you need to be up on all the changes and what needs to right. happen and how, how things will do, you know. We've actually done a little bit of a hybrid model since I came on board with evaluating <laughs> and implementing at the same time. We have implemented some changes and yeah. we, we are seeing some significant improvement, particularly at Frontier, where there's a larger population and more opportunity to improve. Yeah, there's a big, big way to improve there. And we, and we want to have a structure in place yeah. so when the person comes in, 
and rather than go to Patty and say, you know, I think it might be a good idea if we had team leaders in each school. We're going to have a system in place that then they can walk in and meet with the team leaders to talk about the menu, to talk about the purchasing. They won't be starting from scratch. I don't think a person would be successful starting from scratch right. on a job this large. I walked into Frontier a number of years ago with a paragraph as a job description with nobody having any idea at all what the job was. So I understand it was a lot of fun, <laughs> but anyway, it did work out for a period of time, but you know, it's not fun. So, so is, is the co food cost at Frontier the same this first month of September that it was last year? Was it more or is it less? I don't know that yet. We're going to evaluate that at the end of the month. I would say September. that we're spending more money on food. Because we're buying more scratch products, we're buying higher quality food. So my gut reaction, I wasn't there last year to know exactly what was done, but I would say we're spending more on food. So with this All right. plan of sharing things, like that example, we're getting stuff from the collaborative and um, sharing, I don't know what the example was, kind of cheese in each one. So where is it going to be? Is, is one thing going to come up on a Cisco truck or is somebody going to have to go get it? Or... It's going to be stored in, at Frontier, and somebody's going to have to run down and grab. We haven't we haven't decided exactly how that's going to work. That's the kind of thing that we're working on details on. But it's become apparent that it makes sense to have sharing as opposed to having waste. But if you have team leaders at each school, the team leaders would be meeting probably weekly or be whatever. Great. So they come and they deliveries come before the team meeting. Mm -hmm. They pick up the and come back with them to their school. I understand that 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 the physical space problem was what kept bigger purchase joint purchasing arrangements from being made in the, in the past that the, the lack of walk-in freezer space but we're not looking to make large purchases we're looking to make purchases in a quantity that works for everyone to go back to patty's patty's example about the five pound containers of cottage cheese and sour cream if we buy a case we're going to distribute that we're not going to buy 10 cases because 10 cases is cheaper because that doesn't make economic sense for us we're not going to use it in the length of time that would have shelf life and we don't have the ability to store that product but we could go out and buy a case and share it among the four elementary schools. For the record right now, Squash Produce will deliver one tub of cottage cheese to the school. Just, just so we know. Yeah. It's, it's but the cost is different than... Not by the case, I don't believe. I'm the, the collaborative has some great pricing. Okay. No, I'm, I'm just saying right now, Conway can get one tub of cottage cheese but delivered. When you, when you do the joint purchasing, they get delivered to one place. It gets so to, it these gets are the kinds of details that we have the not The cottage cheese yet. came from All Star Dairy, not the, not the collaborative. No, the price is negotiated by the collaborative, right. and we purchased it through All Star. Right. All Star submitted the bid through the collaborative for the right. pricing that we're so able to So if enjoy. we were to go out and buy just one instead of the five, then we're breaking the bid law because we're not using the, what we... Bid. We're just trying to figure out how it gets to each place we, with... We don't know that yet. Yeah, because right. we're gonna work that out. because if we have to pay that. someone to go fetch it, then then you, that, that, the, that would oh, not be reflected. You could still claim that this saves us money because that really wouldn't be reflected. Here's an example and it would cost right. us money. Here's what we're doing right now that I see being a continuing effort. The person who is the food service director is going to visit all of the schools. Right now, I'm doing all the schlepping myself. Mm -hmm. and. If I have to grab a half a case of bananas when I go from Sunderland to Waitley and throw them in the trunk of my car, you know what, that's really not a big deal because I'm going to visit Sunderland and I'm going to visit Waitley. Right. I don't know that I'm going to drive Those a, a tractor trailer truck from be, school to school. That have but to be worked out. It's not right. Can we wrap up this conversation? Because it's getting late and we have clarify. reports. Okay. You kept referring to a team leader at each school? Yes. Is that... What the manager currently? I guess I'm confused by yeah. the terminology. So it's a part of the proposed structure of what we're talking about. So that we would have a food service director yeah. that oversaw all five schools. And then each school would have a team leader. And in this case, the team leader would definitely be Jeannie. So the what we call a manager now would she becomes evolve the team into leader, a right? team yes. leader role. Right. Right. And what she won't have, what she is going to be able to do is focus on the cooking. And we're going to take all the paperwork away from her. Thank you. I just want a clarification about the terminology. It's a new term. We have okay. Used. Thanks, everybody, for your discussion. And uh, let's move on to reports. Uh, collaborative report? Probably nothing. Nope. Okay. Just the meeting next week. Principal report? Yeah, I'll go real quickly. Um, I think everyone has a copy. Um, off to a great start. <clears throat> I tell you this all the time, but this is the best place in the world to be. So very lucky. Um, technology update. So with some... Reap funds, we purchased 25-piece Chromebook cart for two upper grades, 25-piece 
one book cart for first and second grade. Um, so we're um, really close to a, we're, we're at a little better than a one to two situation here at Conway. So we're really doing great technology wise. Jennifer loves her new win books. <laughs> Uh, next page, school choice I wanted to give you, I, I think it was Phil that asked where kids were coming from, so I thought this was, today we had two students walk in, I have not informed the teachers yet, not first grade, but from Ashfield, so we'll be adding two kiddos from Ashfield to our list to total of 15 school choice kids came to us, some lovely, lovely families and lovely children, we're really lucky to have them. Apple tree first day of school. Sunderland um, presented us with a new apple tree, which was Aww, really nice. Sweet. Yeah. Um, we're going to do a hurricane drive. School committee meeting. Uh, I mean, school council meeting. We'll be having um, very soon, so I'll update you next time. Uh, nature's classroom was great. Uh, you know, positive, great time. Students were exposed to wonderful learning experiences, team building. One of the kids. It's funny. I was talking to her in the lunchroom. One of our Kids who went to nature's classroom is tell me about it, you know, it was great, blah, blah, blah. And I said, how was the food? She said, almost as good at Con as Conway food, but really nothing's better. So I thought that was appropriate to report. <laughs> Weather was perfect. Concern, which I talked to the superintendent about, I've raised with the other principals, is, um, you know, they were here for about four days, and then they went off to nature's and that, classroom. And that's... Very concerned about that. Um, I've made suggestions in the past, and I know it's it's challenging but that the fourth grade teacher go to because the teacher knows them and it gives them a security they don't even that. know their teacher don't yet. know the teacher yet. And the, in you addition, know but then if it's that early year you don't want to take that teacher away so yeah. maybe it's the fourth grade classroom assistant goes but that's a lot to send one of kids. my one of my biggest concerns is something that happened this year which was that we we got we have two new wonderful fifth grade students they were only here for four days, and so the, the teacher didn't really get to know the kids. The kids didn't, um, you know, if you have a child with significant needs going, um, you, you just don't know the kids well. I think well. it's a lot to go um, at that time of the year. I do, too. I would certainly be in favor of a spring. So I, I have talked to the superintendent about it. Maggie, Maggie agrees. And I'll tell you, eight more months and you see a whole different maturity level. A lot of these kids have never done a sleepover. It's usually fifth grade that they start the sleepover mm -hmm. stuff. So um, that's something that we're talking about. It's hard because the rest of the district enjoys that September time, I believe. Um, How can it not be an issue for them I, too? Yeah, I, I don't know. Um, that's yeah, nice. so I, that's just something I've talked to the superintendent about. Maggie came to me with it last year. Um, but being new, I, I really, it was sort of just at the beginning, but this year they were they were here for four days, maybe even three. Mm -hmm. How many days were you here, Sarah, before you went? Sarah took the trip to um, Sarah. Three or four days? Two, five. Five days. Um, so, uh, our, uh, so assessments are ongoing. I'll have some assessment data for you at the next meeting. Um, professional development, teachers are being trained in power school grading system. We changed the Friday extended day program. Last year it was a part of the um, out of school program. But what I found was the kids, the out of school program is after school and it's very relaxed and it's fun, 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 fun. And <coughs> from that 1.30 to 3 time, it, it needed to feel a little more like school time, school rules thing, you know. So Sarah's part of it. We've had all of our IAs participate last week, and then they will this week. And sort of the school has taken over that program, and it was fabulous. It's sort of like the summer program. It was fabulous. It was. It's just a continuation of school, but it's more project based and sort of fun. And then get some recess. Didn't you think you've done both programs wow, before? Yeah, so Sarah, tell us. Oh, that's, that's right. You were here last week. So <laughs> that's my report. Elaine, yep. before we go to the superintendents, there was something I was supposed to update you and I forgot. Could I do that now? Yep. So we had a visit from the tree warden and then Kristen said apple tree. Oh, okay. Uh, so we have to have some um, trees removed and we also have some, um, um, I don't know what you call like poison ivy things um, popping up that he identified. and In the um, back woods there? Or? I'm not exactly sure of the okay. location. That's really the playground. Uh, I think it was closer to the playgrounds. Um, so I was, 
contacted by the town administrator, Tom Hutchinson, mm -hmm. to see if we had about $3,800 in our maintenance budget to take care of these items. Um, I told him that it was very early in the year for us to expend that, and I would feel more comfortable if we could get through heating season before we made that decision. Um, and what he offered was that they were going to put a special uh, a warrant article for the special town meeting in Conway for the $3,800 so that we can get the work. I believe that he said the meeting, I want to say is sometime like the last week of October, mm -hmm. second or the third or fourth week of October, and they're going to put a warrant article on there for us for the $3,800 so we can get the trees and the poison ivy taken care of. Are the trees related to tornado damage? What, one, one is just completely dead. dead. Okay. And the other one has de a lot I'll of debt. I'll, I'll, I'll get the report for There was for money the or effect. something for tornado damage. Right. Yeah. So but, right okay. now, I, we went with, he needed the decision that day, so uh, Kristen and Dr. Carey and I spoke, and we decided that the special town um, article would probably be more, because uh, 3800 is a good chunk of our yeah. building maintenance. So um, I don't know if we'll be, uh, we'll, I'll definitely go to that meeting. Um, in attendance and I will make sure that you all get the report the tree reward and report and come to review. Great. I got a poison ivy guy. I might be able to get a I think I would be able to get a discount or some sort of uh, you got a poison ivy guy? Stuff. Yeah. I get, we gotta go through like the for the real the That's real the, the real deal they show up with moon suits and you know the, the whatever to, I thought stuff. it was called goats. Yeah, no, no, no. no. Well, I'm not getting goats. Uh, goats are poison, I, goats poison, are ivy, poison ivy gets worse and worse because of global warming. Goats. Did you get they, Every year it gets worse. Oh, the stupid goats. Thank you, Dr. Goats Jerry. are so smart. That's the goats problem. my life. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Everything they're not supposed I, to. I, I, yeah. Nothing that I wanted. That's to why I got rid of mine. Just a bunch of peppers four times. All right, Lynn, you ready? Thank you. I don't have much to to announce. To report on. We had a wonderful welcome back. We had a wonderful welcome back breakfast provided by Flory and the kitchen staff of Frontier Regional, and it was scrambled egg sausage and homemade muffins. Uh, Can't beat that. I should have come. It. Yeah. And, and home fries from potatoes out of the ground. Right. There you go. Fresh made home fries. <laughs> um, the administrative team and I met last week to discuss the possibility of blizzard bags. And what we decided, we looked at data and research and experiences from Orange and Mahar and Gateway Regional. And so we looked at that and we looked at the information and the team decided that we would take this school year, rather than push it through, to research it and see, again, how successful it is in other districts. And they just jinxed us into 10 snow days by doing that, don't you think? <laughs> well, my goal was to have <laughs> nice, uh, well, my goal was to have three snow days, and then instead of kicking into a new week, then we would start with the. Um, and my concerns too were no. that we have uh, MCAS in, uh, in uh, March, April, and May, and I would prefer to use those days with some kind of learning if the kids are out of school just to help them either be reading or researching or doing something, manipulating with numbers. But we decided we would take this year and uh, to really focus on how it's going in the other districts. And then, um, of course, we would survey the parents and see how they feel. And what I found from Gateway was the people that love it just love it the teachers and the kids and they you know those people just love it but there's also some other opinions on the other side and they didn't love it at all internet access is a big that issue is, with it but and that's a problem in this town some right. parts have it and some parts don't so and there's in orange of course and mahar they have the same issues in gateway yeah. and they've all handled those situations and there's you know different ways to deal with it but we're just not ready to embark on that journey this year my sister's district in new hampshire has done it for years I and uh, she's happy to i'm sure your district yes. did did your district do no it? my district did oh, okay but we didn't have that many but i do know in new hampshire where i came from it's a very um it's it's a very often used she's in hampstead yes so, but they have, she's, they're happy to share their stuff that would if be you great. want it that at some point. Yeah. So si yeah. since you're waiting a year, that would make, um, if, if you were going to be implementing it, that would be a contract year then, the, if we wait. Mm -hmm. So, which is a good thing. I think something like this is, 
It would have to it, be definitely be negotiated. And, yeah. and it trends towards an employee benefit kind of a thing. It's not completely, but there's elements of it, and that those things are best introduced in the context of an employment agreement. So, and again, these other districts have taken care of, of that. Like the teachers are involved, you know, uh, in the planning, and then they're they're available by internet, by email in the morning, and then of course they have to very similar like our tornado day. They have to assess what the children have done and how the quality of the work and this sort of thing. So the teachers Did, are definitely involved in it, yes. Has anybody addressed the issue too of what, what is when selectmen or finance committees get a hold of this concept and say, great, do this, I'll put it in your budget, 10, 10 days a year, 15 days a year, look how much money we can save. <coughs> no, 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 it doesn't work like that. <laughs> this right. requires us to teach 180 yeah. days. Right. And, and we would have to work it so the teachers would be, you know, the, you know everyone would have a piece in it. And then, but there's a lot of questions. What do you do with special ed students? What do you do with IAs? What do you do with, and so we're not ready to deal with that. Let's deal with what we have on our plates now. Yep. And I will continue to try to call the evening before when there's a snow day or delays to you help did, the families. You did great with that last and year. To it help the uh, parents and families adjust. It is a big deal in the morning if you are responsible to get to work yourself. The weather's horrible, and now you got the kids. So I think that the families need that. Uh, one, may, one day, though, I might make a mistake and call it wrong, but I will do my best because I think the, uh, the parents and the families There was one that. day that they made the call down, the super, Marty made the call, and like half the, you know, two hours later, it was sunny and gorgeous, and, and like, yeah. it was, we're like, oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. That's a bonus day. Yeah. Uh, well, I keep looking, you know, I'm very vigilant. Mm -hmm. Spent a lot of time on it. So anyway, I'll be more visible in the buildings in my second year. Kristen and I have made plans for me to meet here at least at once every two weeks, but my goal is really once a week, and I just love it. I love it. I love being in schools. I love the kids. I love the teachers. I love the classrooms. I love it. And again, the superintendent's first year is always to go slow, learn the lay of the land, understand the values and traditions of the district, and to make a vision and a strategic plan for moving the district forward. I have worked hard on this with my admin team. We have a strategic plan. We've worked really hard on it for almost a year. And these uh, issues on the strategic plan were actually uh, born of audits that Marty Barrett had had done, the CMSI audit, the DESE special ed audit, and uh, what the plan that they were looking at when I came on board. And then it's evolved into our strategic plan which uh, I will present to you folks at the joint meeting in October, and, as well as my goals for the year. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anything Thank you. else? Thanks, everybody, for your participation. Appreciate it. And the meeting is adjourned at 818. Can I have a vote? Aye, aye. Aye.